So I just want to say thank you for coming back. Uh, we, we we love having you here. And I just have something that I have to say is I have baseball and I have a lot of school going on. So my cousin Elizabeth is going to step in for me and give her a little toss and pass it on to her. Whoa, all right. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Everybody, this is the oldest niece of mine and uh, Ryan's cousin, Elizabeth. She's jumping in to help out today because Ryan needs a little break. He has a, uh, got a little bit too much on his plate. So we're going to do this together at my place. And then Pat's going to continue to facilitate as always. And Gigi is going to cook tonight. I'm cooking. I'm cooking. <laughs> So we all have teach. Amina, Susan, is with, uh, looks like Julia. So Oh, hi, Amina. Amina's Julia's daughter. She's my buddy. So I'm so glad you guys are cooking tonight. We had a lot of people cooking. Very cool. Really exciting. Thank you for coming back. It's been a little bit longer than we usually go. So here we go. We've got Elizabeth going to be the, the chef tonight here. I'm just going to tell her what to do and show you guys what to do. And um, Gigi's gonna cook on the facilitating end. And hopefully we can drag Ryan back in to eat dinner when it's over. But um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll give Ryan a little tot to. Maybe we'll tap one more cousin or sibling in before he gets his head wrapped around baseball and all that. And we'll get him back on, on the docket. But hey, Ryan, um, thanks for tapping me in. I'm so happy to be doing this. <laughs> I'm glad I got the honor. And hopefully I'll make you proud. <laughs> woo woo. <laughs> he'll 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 be super proud because he gets to go do homework <laughs> um but yay so everybody here's elizabeth she's gonna take this thing over so before we get started we'll do a little just quick overview of the meal um because it's just easier to have that all in your head to end goal as jocelyn told me when when we get started so we're gonna have the steak i called it a gaucho steak it's kind of an Argentinian recipe. It's gonna be amazing. And we're gonna kind of um, fumigate you, clear your nose and lungs out doing it with a really nice kind of gaucho thing. So if you have a grill and you wanna use it, you save yourself a little, a few tears tonight. Then we have the uh, Spanish uh, potato tortilla and they call it tortilla, but it's not a tortilla. It's the Spanish tortilla. It's almost like a potato omelet. It's incredible. Spanish people eat it for hors d'oeuvres. They eat appetize on it with a salad. It's a nice lunch. It's a really great thing to know how to do. And there's a few tricky techniques, which I think you'll be happy to learn. And that's often served with what we call a romesco sauce. It's an incredible, basically roasted red pepper. Some people use tomato. We're using sun-dried and almond sauce. It's dynamite. It'll be great on your potato. It'll be great on your steak. It'll be great to have in your fridge to put on sandwiches. It's incredible. And then finally, we have some Catalonian greens, which will be a nice hearty green with some pine nuts and raisins if you want them. If you don't, you don't have to, but listen, all this stuff's friendly. Give everything a try and you can always adjust it next time you make it. And um, so, Oh, also, because Ryan's not cooking tonight, we have two, not one, but two kinds of nuts in this menu. Ryan's allergic to nuts, so sometimes we don't put them on. He leaves them on the side, and sometimes we, we I just don't pick recipes with nuts in them. But we're all nuts tonight. We got pine nuts, and we've got almonds. And actually, I think he can eat both of those, but whatever. So nuts, nuts, nuts tonight. But if anybody can't have them, just don't put them on your greens, and don't eat the romesco sauce, because... A romesco sauce without almonds is just not anything. So just don't put that on your plate. Everybody else make it and use it for tons of things. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get our steak out. If you don't have it out, it should be out. It should be room temperature and it should be dry. So I've got mine on a pan, on some paper towels. I kind of dab it a little. And um, we're just gonna get that out so it's warm when we cook it or at least room temperature when we cook it. So this is less than a pound of skirt steak. It's not, it looks like a lot. And I said we were cooking for four, but it's really just Elizabeth and I. So, but this guy is gonna shrink up quite a bit when we cook it. So don't think, oh my gosh, what she told me to get is way too much. It won't be. 
But this piece, for instance, before I get it all dried off, it's super long and I'm not grilling. I'm cooking it in a grill pan in my kitchen. So I'm gonna cut that in half. So Elizabeth, whack that guy in half for me. If anybody else has super long pieces, cut them to about that size, you know, like about the size of your hand so that you can get them in your pan, yada, yada. Perfect. And then I'm gonna show you, show you with this piece, there's a, there's a trick to this um, meat. We're gonna talk about it now because later when it's time to cut it and eat it, we will be bumming if we have to stop and have this lesson. So here's your skirt steak, right? I'm gonna try to get it close so you can see there's a grain that goes this way in my skirt steak. If you pull on it, do you see it, Elizabeth? Yeah, so you it's can like just lines. Yeah, so okay. it looks like lines. You can really tell when I say, what way does the grain go? Do you see yours, Gigi? Yeah. Yes, I do. So when we cut skirt steaks, because they're quick cooks and they're marbled, do you see how marbled they are? We have to cut them across the grain. If mm -hmm. you cut it with the grain, you will be chewing it all night long like a shoe. And if you cut it the proper way, it's like butter. So it really matters. So keep uh, aware of what way your grain goes because it's a little bit easier to see when it's raw as well. All right, so get that on your pan and we'll just set that aside until later. Susan, right. Susan yeah. can you tell us why it is that you dry your steak? Why do we dry our steak? Because when you put your steak in a hot pan or on the grill or anything like that, you're gonna get uh, two two things. If it's wet, hi Ellen. Ellen Flanagan is joined in the house. Yay. If your steak is wet or moist, it's gonna steam. It'll hit that hot pan and it'll take all the heat out of the pan and steam will come up. You know how when you when you put water in a hot pan, steam happens? That's sort of what happens with meat. So if you're gonna put that in there and all this water's there or moisture, it's gonna steam. So it'll be gray. If you put a dry piece of meat in it, same thing with chicken or anything like that, you hit it with the pan and shh, and that is color. That's color on your meat. That's caramelization and color. So we want it dry, dry, dry. And then we're gonna let it hit the pan and we'll, we'll, we'll tell you what we're gonna do later. But the reason that you want dry meat of any kind is to get color and caramelization and not be steaming your meat. You're, you're grilling, you're not steaming. Good? Beautiful. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, we are going to, we're gonna do our potatoes. So I hope everybody started with their potatoes in the cold water which would be awesome. And I got a towel here. I'm gonna pull a couple of them out. I have a pan that is, a, what is that Pat, a nine incher? Yep. I got a nine inch pan. And I think, you know, I'm even just kind of did it in my head. And I'm gonna use five potatoes for a nine inch pan. And I have, you know, pretty medium size. Sometimes the potatoes are small. These are average size. So I'm gonna have Elizabeth do all five of them. I think it's going to be the right amount. If you only got four, you're going to do yours with four. If you have a smaller pan, for instance, you did a little bit of a six inch or a seven inch, you might need a little bit less potato. But, um, you know, I already, you know how I forgot to put the onion on the menu? <laughs> I forgot to put the onion on the list. We're going to start with your onion. I've got five potatoes, so I'm going to use one onion about this high. Is that a Vidalia or a sweet onion? I got a sweet onion. I got a Vidalia. Any onion you have will work because we're going to cook it slow and it's going to be sweet. If Amen. you've got a tiny little onion, do two. If you've got one about this size, like I have like a baseball, one will be enough. So like usual, if you haven't ever cooked with us before, you're going to cut the end off. Er, 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 er. You're going to go to the hairy part. You're going to cut the whole thing in half. And then you're gonna peel the skin off. You can pick whatever knife you like, Elizabeth. So, so while Elizabeth, we're waiting here, Susie, we got uh, the butcher is asking us uh, if I wanted him to trim the fat off the skirt steak. She said no. Should should she trim the fat off the, the skirt steak? Okay, so skirt steak doesn't usually have a ton of extraneous fat. I mean, if you have more that I have, I mean, let me see if I can find a fatty spot. Like for instance, that side, 
No, you want to leave that on. If you have some that's off on the side and it's just fat, not attached to any meat, you can snip it off. But can essentially, no. Those, mine? Let's see a little closer, Gigi. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, There's you know what? If I was Jen, okay, thanks for asking that. If I was Jen and I had that much fat on mine, I would take my knife and I would slip it just up under the, a little bit of that fat and just take a little bit so that you see, generally speaking, you see meat only on the top of your steak. Pat, okay. while you're doing that, you want to show everybody and uh, make some noise so they can see because I don't have fat on mine. I'm going to, yeah, I'm I don't just... know if you can see, can you see them? I'm trying yeah. to tip the computer. Yes, that's perfect. See? Okay. So, um, so Pat, yeah, make some noise uh, so yeah. people can see that. Just, I, I'm using the wrong knife, but the, the fat is at least good fat that will probably break down, but I'm just getting a, a little pieces under there and trimming it down. But the fat that I'm seeing here is fat that will probably melt very well. It's not a, a, a veiny uh, fat. So I wouldn't worry too much about having it. And yeah. you don't have a thick you don't have a thick fat cap of any kind. That's do you? correct. It's it's okay. very it's very um, it's gonna it's gonna melt right away. Okay, so good. it's a little bit it's a tiny bit unusual to see a, that amount of fat on a skirt steak. So I'm glad that um, Jen's happened to have that just so we have that for an example. If anyone else needs to do a little trim up, if otherwise get let's get started on that onion. And if anybody needs us to slow down because you don't have any helpers and you um, you had to do a little trimming up, just let Pat know on the chat so we can slow down for you, all right? So onion and hat, yep, and all the way through, and then peel that skin off, and I've got a, a disposal over there in the corner for you. So you're getting your onion in half, and then, uh, and then peeled up. Awesome. And that does, like Ryan used to know, takes a little bit of time. And uh, so I'm going to, usually I'm, I'm cutting onions at the same time. So I'm not going to, I don't want to speed ahead. But Elizabeth's got her onion. Jenna, you have your onion ready? I got it ready. Okay, everybody. So now we have our onion with the hairy thing on one side and it's cut in half. <laughs> we are just, <laughs> we are literally going to go through the top, but not all the way to the thing. And we're just gonna cut it in half, but we're, we're gonna try to keep the back intact so we can hang on to it. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, one line or? Do one line, just one line through the middle. One line through the middle. Okay. And because what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut little slices that are half halfies, but it's easier to cut it in half now and keep the whole thing. Yep, okay. cut both of them. Susan, you're doing like cuts. You're, you're, are you going against the grain or with the grain when you're cutting? I'm only doing one single cut. So here's my hairy side. Here's the flat front. See how Elizabeth did it? That's what I want. Just one cut and how she, see how she went like almost all the way through. Gotcha. But not. Okay, just one cut. And the next step is going to be then to go back just like we usually do with our hands turned under and guiding our knife on our knuckles. And we're gonna cut that up, slice it all the way to the back in slices about kind of as thin as you can. That was too fast. Let's just say cut them as thin as you can. If you're not confident and they're a little thicker, you're just gonna cook yours for a little bit longer. But you see how thin? Cut that baby down as thin as you can. And we'll get through half of it and we're gonna stop and throw some oil in our pan, but let's get half of it cut and then we'll get the other half done. Perfect. I'll get the oil ready. Yeah, and okay. so what are we doing with the onions? We're gonna, the onions go in the potato tortilla. So that's a great question. While we're cutting the onion, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how this tortilla is going to go. We're going to put in unreasonable, but also this is a side note from the girl who studied abroad and lived in Spain for a year. If you don't have an onion, it's not the end of the world. Some people actually make it with no onion, onion, but it is better with onion. 
And I'm just seeing Elizabeth getting to the end of her thing here. When you get that close to your fingers, everybody, turn it down on its side and cut it back towards the thing that way. So you've got a nice stable surface and you don't cut yourself on that last bit. Does that make sense? Yep. Great. So yes, you don't need the onion if, if you didn't see the note that came in late, you're good. Um, but I like it with onion because I just think it adds a lot of moisture and well, onions are delicious. And that's why we also bought a nice sweet onion. We're basically going to put an exorbitant amount of oil in our, in our nonstick pan. And we're going to bring it up to um, like a medium temperature. We're not going to be frying these onions. We're going to be sort of sweating them in oil. And, and are we doing that now? That are, we getting, are we prepping our pan now? Keep prepping. Uh, did you get through half an onion already? Yes. Yep. My onion's Let's done. Let's go ahead. Take a second. Take a break. Take a second and get your pan and get your oil. And you're, you're going to do yours in front of everyone, Elizabeth, and glug it in. I mean, it's going to be like, it's disgusting. It's going to be like that almost full bottle that Elizabeth has in her hand that I got. Now, don't worry, everybody. This oil is just for sweating these potatoes and onions, and you're going to be able to sieve it out and reuse it. It's not like it's going to suck this up. We're going to, we're just using it for cooking. And it's going to taste delicious. So you're going to be able to use it for the next two weeks with all the dishes you cook. You're going to put it back in the jar or in something else. And you're going to keep using it. Just tip that down a little. Glug out faster for you. There you go. Yeah, so glug it and glug it in. Glug it in. How, how and I'm just asking this for my own, uh, how deep in the pan, like, are we talking an inch of oil? From yeah, probably like until the first slide of the finger. Because <laughs> basically, basically we're going to put our onions in here first because they take a little longer and then all the potatoes and we want them almost under. Like, you know, we're, they're, we're, we're sort of poaching them in oil. Do you ever hear that phrase? Yeah. With fish. I do that yeah, with white fish. With fish. So that's kind of perfect. So look, ours comes up to about like midway through the screws. All right, I got we're, we're going more oil here, but I'm uh, just because I heard you say something that most people probably never do, and I don't even do it, but I know you do because we do a lot of fish at the lake. You re sift out your oil and keep it. Well, that's a lot, a little bit different sometimes when you have um, fish dishes and meat dishes, Pat, because then you have to really be careful of what you reuse that for. This is a vegetarian only thing. So this oil won't even get cloudy. It'll be a little bit flavored from potato and a little bit flavored from onion. And you'll just, you can run it through a little sieve or a coffee filter. And it's literally just good to go to use again for anything you're gonna cook. Whereas if you do a fish fry, yeah, sure you can save the oil, but you can only really ever use that again for another fish fry. Do you know what I mean? So uh, yes, we're using a whole, practically a whole bottle of nice Spanish olive oil but we're gonna use a little bit later for our greens. We're gonna use a little bit when we actually cook the tortilla. And then we're gonna have, like when I do this, I usually end up filling this jar with the oil when I'm done. So it's not gonna use up that much of the actual oil. All right, so get your flame on medium, medium high up first, maybe just to get it up. And then um, once we have our onion all cut up, it'll be warm enough to start putting that in. So let's go ahead and cut the other half of your onion or your second onion if you're using two and you will be almost ready to put those babies in. I'm taking Elizabeth's potatoes out of the water, drying them off for her a little bit because I don't have anything else to do. Yeah, it is good when I'm not cutting the onion really fast and then uh, thinking you guys are all with me. So this works out perfectly. Very slow. Slow and steady. And wait, now look how your fingers are. Oh, yep. God. Exactly. Here, that? watch this. Like that. So that you're using. Do you grip in with your nails? A little. I kind of just balance it. And then what I do is I use that knuckle, which I put out in front to guide my knife so I can get it even thinner than normal. And then all you have to worry about is not getting your thumb in the way. All right, and then when you can't get any more, you flip it down on its side and get the rest that way. 
So you tuck your nails inside your knuckles to use the knuckles as a guide so you don't cut the tips of your finger off. Exactly. And also she has a very beautiful manicure. So that's important. <laughs> I feel that just for this cooking show. <laughs> Everyone gets their nails done before cooking, right? It's uh, fantastic. But no. Yeah. And then this way, honey. Just all the way up to the knot and then throw that, that little knot out. And Talk yes, those fingers. Stuff. Say it again. Talk those fingers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Susan, Ben is asking if uh, Ben is asking if he can use pecans instead of almonds. Hmm. Let's put it this way: it's an almond thing, but if you don't have them, pecans are going to work. We're going to call it a pecan romesco. I love it. They're they're a little bit richer, and um, well, we'll see how you'll they'll tell us how it goes. But why not? You know what? We're um, we're trying. We're going to be flexible, and everybody's got what they've got. So, I think my oil is, is uh, coming up to temp. So, I'm going to turn it to medium, and then I'm going to have Elizabeth. I have these little plastic um, thingies, which are great, these plastic cutting boards. And I just put a damp paper towel on the bottom so they don't slide away. Then you can sort of slide them right into your thing. But if not, just do it very slowly and carefully, and you're going to kind of just push these all into your oil slowly and carefully and and susan it's not going to like sizzle and and fry it should, it should if it's sizzling then your oil is too high for all right. that oil to be hot this fast would be kind of right. surprising but ours is sizzling a little so i am going to turn it down a little bit because there is moisture so that's going to sizzle but on top of that we don't want a fried onion we want a clear Sweated. We're going to turn that way down. All right. Perfect. So ours has just a little bubble, but not like any sort of, it's, a, it is like a, a, ours has a little bit too much of a bubble. So I turned it way down. And once the onions get in there, they're going to sap the heat out of that pan. And um, that's already started to happen. So yeah happy with that. You can pop that over there. And so those onions are going to just start to cook nice and slow while we get the potatoes ready to join them. All right. So everyone back to your counter, get your potatoes. Potatoes. Them. Here's what's going to happen with the potato. You are, ooh, I'm all crooked. And Elizabeth's out of the screen. We're going to literally cut our potato in half the long way. And then I'll take one of your halves. Okay. And then when you get it in half the long way, you're going to cut it in half again the long way. And I'll take both sides of that. And now we have two sides and we are going to, we're going to turn them across our body and we're going to cut the short way now. So we're going to cut them into little triangles. I'm going to call it what would you guys call that? An eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch? That's a that's yeah. a quarter of an inch. Like a quarter of an inch. And you're gonna go all the way down the potato. And perfect. You're gonna get a whole bunch of little triangle pieces. And you know what? If they're all a little bit different, that's totally fine. Again, I'm gonna show you. You're getting your triangle pieces and cut all your potatoes off. And Susan, do we need to stir the onions at all or just leave no, them alone? They, sh they shouldn't, if they're cooking slow enough, you shouldn't really need to, but I like to move things around just because I can't help myself. <laughs> but you can move them around. But again, you should see a little, like you said, you had the perfect words. You had a little bubble going on. So we're poaching them. We're, we're cooking them without getting color. And we're gonna get them going a little because the potatoes don't take quite as long. And um, wow, we might not need all five of these. We'll see. Susan. Hey, Suze. Yeah. This could be the first time Pat and I have actually cooked together in 25 years that we're not arguing. Oh, uh, that's telling him to stop bossing me around. This could be that's a new so thing. Cute. 
and that's because you're that's because you're cooking, not Pat. Pat is a facilitator. You're the cook. You have no, to do you really... else to do. He's, still in, he's still getting his hands in there. <laughs> but I have the knife. So I can't uh, exactly. You keep you're gonna learn you're gonna know how to cook this meal when we're done. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Susan, if I just look at Jen when she's cooking, she will say, Stop looking at me. I'm fine. <laughs> Listen, from Rochester, you were already correcting Elizabeth from Rochester all the way to New York. And I, did see, I did see when Elizabeth did her half. I do want you to make sure you barely get your knife in. And I want to see your hand over the top of it. I don't want your fingers all out on the side. Hands over the top so that you don't whack those fingers off. That's the first time doing it? Yep. Perfect. Perfect. So yeah, everybody, Elizabeth spent uh, over a year, right? Oh, sure. well, combined, it was like a year and a half in Spain, going to school, living, having fun, eating food, cooking some food. So I love this theme. This is why we're cooking Spanish tonight. So We've been now, waiting for a Spanish meal with Elizabeth. I know. I said I would cook one. I never did. Well, <laughs> COVID didn't help us at all. That's true. That's true. That did make things a little bit harder. I'll I'll actually do one Memorial Day. Yay! We'll take it. That means uh, Pat, you and I are up for that one yeah. meal. That's it. One meal. One whole meal. Um, <laughs> we'll take it anytime. Yep. She said. So when we're done with this, we're gonna literally cook these potatoes for like twenty minutes. So that's why we're doing this job first. The actual making of the tortilla, it only takes maybe five or well, five minutes per side, so about 10 minutes. But we need to get this part done first to cook and soften our potato and to get our onion. And then there's going to be an egg mix, and then it's going to all go back in later to make this amazing, almost like you would call it a potato cake. Yeah. And uh, Aunt Ellen just uh, wanted to remind uh, that while Elizabeth was in Spain, she fell in love. <laughs> oh, she did. <laughs> we all did. He said, he said he would come on the Zoom. I'm not sure if he will. Oh, I wish he would. It's one hour. And wait, ahead. he's, oh yeah, because he's not in Spain. He's actually in Brazil right now. So we might get a, we might get a viewing at the end or sometime. Yes, I'm here. I didn't miss the date. We've got oh, a pretty good yeah. pack of potatoes. Uh, Antonio Martinez has joined the party, and we're yeah. going to move yeah. in. But Antonio, just so you know, if you have any questions, we have a chat, and you uh, you can throw uh, something in on the chat. <laughs> oh, that's not Antonio. It's Antonino. Antonino. Right. It's, Nino. Uh, it's Nino. It's Nino. It's Nino. We were just talking about you. All right, so we've got a pretty huge pile of potatoes here with just three done. So I I might think we might only need four. But um, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we got when we get one more potato. We might put the four in and then we'll go back and look. How many potatoes do you have, John? She's already um, got four done. Four done. See, that's why she doesn't like me cooking with her because I answer for her. And is it a big pile? How, what's your pile look like? Yeah, it's a big pile, actually. I gotta keep, can you see? Oh, yeah. Good? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's more than enough. So I, I'm going to give Elizabeth another minute to finish her one half of spud, and then we're going to get them in. And our onions are boiling a little bit too much now, so like lots of little tiny bubbles, but we're going to get the potatoes in, and that'll take all the heat out of that oil. And Nino is uh, complimenting the chef there, uh, saying you're doing an amazing job, Elizabeth. Keep it up. <laughs> Thank she you. is doing an amazing Thank job. You. I'm trying to teach him how to cook too. So this will be, I mean, he already knows how to make this dish, obviously, but next time when but, I go back, we'll have to do this together. And also maybe add the romesco and the yeah. steak and the boom. All right, so let's get those all on your thing. Susan, uh, Paul is wondering because his wife is allergic to onion, can he substitute with onion powder? No, leave him out. It's it's perfectly fine without the onion. This is often made without the onion, like Elizabeth said. So 
leave them out. Just leave it as is. It's going to have a ton of flavor coming up later. Don't worry about it. Just do potato. And Don wants to know, are we putting the potatoes in with the onions? We are. We're sliding them in nice and slow. And I'm going to even help. So you can see, we're going to just edge them into the pan because now we've got fairly hot oil, everyone. So, you know, be careful. And we're going to get them all in. And then I'll trade off with Elizabeth and she'll just use, you want, you want something wooden or plastic so that, you know, you can kind of smush them all down in around in that oil now. And we have, as my father would say, five pounds of, 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. We yeah. kind of do as well. So should I read <laughs> out? We don't have a lot in there, but that's okay. because We're going to turn ours up a little because we are full and you're not going to believe it. I'm going to glug a little bit more oil in ours, just a little. And these are going to get soft quick, so don't worry. They'll go. They'll they'll smush down in soon. They'll get they'll get down there. Our no, has, just nearly had a little kitchen catastrophe. Oh boy! Seamus decided to come into the kitchen and set himself up at Pat's feet, but Pat didn't know it till he turned around and almost went into the oil. Oh man, down! Uh, that would be bad. <laughs> All right. So now we want our heat at medium because it's going to take a while for this oil to. I can even like practically put my finger in ours. We need that hotter. And I'm going to turn it up just a touch. And we can always turn it back down later. And now those guys are going to cook for like 20 minutes. So we have time to put all the rest of our meal kind of on dock, so that when this thing goes um, gets ready to go, it'll be you know, things will start to really rock and roll at that point. Does someone Susan, want to see can you show your, Susan, can you show your pan? Barb's wondering yeah. if she's got too many potatoes in the pan. Yeah, we have the same problem, Barb, but let me bring mine over. We do as well. We have a really full pan. Look, that's it from the side. It's okay. They're gonna, they're gonna cook so slow. It's not like we're cooking them at a high, hot pace. So, we're just poaching them up. And then this means we're gonna have a nice big tortilla later. Okay, and you can try to mix those. Um, I'm gonna even just use my tongue. You can try to get the onions up top so that the potatoes go down to the bottom. Might even use two tools because we know the onions already have a little bit of cook on them. So we'll let the potato have the purpose. But yes, you might have a bigger pan than I do. You might have a smaller one, but Ooh, the onions are gorgeous. Yeah, the onions are beautiful. So we can get those potatoes down in a little more and bring the onions up top. And again, these guys are going to cook for like a good 20 minutes to get soft, soft ish, because they're the tortilla part is just kind of setting them up. They should be. Well, Susan, on our end, we. On our end, we have uh, the oil is is even covering the potatoes and onion. That's great. It, yeah, uh, it's fine. I mean, my if I put any more oil in this pan, it's gonna fall over the side. That's how so, ours is. That's good. So let's everybody. We're just gonna keep our eye on those. We want that oil to get a little hot, and then we want to take it down to medium so that again we're not looking for color on the potatoes. If they get a little, I'm fine with that but you don't want much color. You just really want them now to get poached, soft-ish. We should all be on the same page with that because we're all cut our potatoes about the same size. We'll test them later. But since mine are coming a little bit out of the oil, I'm gonna poke at them and push them down and around. And once they get a little softer, I think they'll go down in that oil a little bit easier. So why, right. why, did, you use a, uh, why did you use a frying pan instead of like a Dutch oven or something like that? Because I don't want to do two pans, I'm going to use one pan, and this is the pan that makes the tortilla. If you don't have a nonstick pan later, you're screwed. So let's use one pan, and now we know how many potatoes we need because that's the pan that's going to go in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I have the whole. Um, I can auction this potato that's already peeled off. <laughs> we don't need it. <laughs> All right. So back to the counter. We're going to do a whole bunch more chopping and getting ready for this meal while those potatoes cook. If you have somebody cooking with you, they can keep an eye on your potatoes. And if not, just go back and look at them every once in a while and, and poke them down and push them around so that they're all getting um, cooked up. Uh, we might as well, while we're doing this, want to grab the eggs out of the fridge, honey. They're on the second shelf down on the right. Get your eggs out. Let's just make the egg mixture and get that done so that, you know, later when we get to it, we'll, we'll be 
good to go in it. And you're gonna need five eggs. I said a half a dozen, but the amount, well, let's go. You see them? You got them. You can use those pockets too. That's why I like that apron. You got pockets for eggs. And then you're gonna to wanna, to, I had my potatoes in this before, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put them right, the eggs right in there. So break five eggs into your bowl. So Susan, good news. Yeah. My egg lady just got 15 new chicks. Aww. So I was gonna get in that egg lady. All goes well. Doesn't it take them like six months to start really producing? Yeah, I figure by midsummer. Yep, our guy up at the lake has a ton, but we just hope there's no catastrophes, chicken wise. Right. Catastrophe? Yeah, there's a whole. Oh, there's, oh you there's mean like foxes? Fox or in the hen house. Yeah, yes. or bear. And or the geese. We oh, had a weasel attack here. It was the weasels that got the, uh, the chickens. Uh, in Rochester. Those weasels. Those weasels. I, think, I think Jen can tell you a fun fact about weasels and what they do with chickens. <laughs> All right, well, let's get that fun fact on because we got some tucking to do. Go. <laughs> do you want to hear it? Yeah, let's go. They're awful. And the reason people are called weasels is because they're terrible creatures. They don't eat the animal, they rip the head off it, and then they bury the head and leave the body. Oh my oh, God. Oh, wow, they're, they're real gangsters. <laughs> they are gangsters. All right, so. So, so quickly, Julia yeah. just stepped away for a minute and wants to know what heat the potatoes are on. Medium? Medium heat. So you want to have a, some bubbles happening, but we're not frying these potatoes. We're just poaching them and cooking them slowly. So like my heat, I turned it up to get the heat up. Now I'm turning it down a little bit because I don't want... I don't really want brown potatoes. Again, if you get a little brown, not the end of the world. But um, yeah, nonstick pan is what you should be cooking your potatoes in if you have one, Julia. Because we're gonna come back to it later and make the tortilla in this pan. So I'm moving my potatoes around a little bit. They're starting to fit a little bit better in the pan at this point. I'm gonna put the ones that are underwater over and over under, but yeah, we gotta we gotta move on to something else. We're gonna be here all day. Ellen says so, the packing order in chickens is for real. For real. We start whisking the eggs. Whisking the eggs. We're gonna put a good pinch of salt in there, maybe even two. Well, Elizabeth size pinch. We're gonna do three. <laughs> <laughs> I usually go with a good handful. Oh, God. Is that good? Yeah. And then some pepper, some fresh pepper. I don't know if Nina's still here, but he always criticizes me for how much salt I put in my food. And it's definitely because of you. It's because <laughs> of me. But the truth of the matter is, everybody, it's way better to cook with salt than it is to put salt on food after it's already cooked. Because then you're eating salt. Now this is going to incorporate in our eggs and our potatoes and our onions. And to be told, I'm using kosher salt, so it's got a lot less sodium than a table salt. So you can use your hands with it. It's a big flake. It, it's a lot less salty. I mean, I'm going to even put my finger in, and I go, oh, that's nice. It doesn't need salt. I put a little bit more pepper, honey. And then only because... Um... Nino's going to use more salt for now on. Yay! <laughs> But not table salt, not that awful table salt. <laughs> you need more pepper. Yeah, I think a good bit of pepper because now think about it. This is going to be the whole pan size tortilla. So, you know, you want it to have some good flavor, although we're going to have a beautiful sauce. And what's going to happen is we're going to end up putting the hot, um, the onions and potatoes in this mixture and we're going to let it sit and then it's going back in the pan to make the tortilla. So, I think that Elizabeth is perfect. We're gonna move it over, take a peek at your potatoes, and then we'll get back here for the next day. You can even leave that in because we'll probably want to give it up. While you're peeking, Susan, good bit of pepper. If you're using a pepper grinder, is that 10 twists, 20 twists? What's that? Let's go like 12 twists. Sweet. I think that's what we did, right, Elizabeth? Yeah, it was a, a lot, it seemed like. It seems like a lot, but then when you think about it in your head yeah. about it being enough pepper for this bowl tortilla, then you can understand that. All right, next stop. 
what's up? I don't know last. We can't do that. Oh, shoot. Let's do, remember last time, if anyone cooked with us when we did pine nuts last time, we had a pan. We're going to use this one. Let's just get those over with. We're going to get a pan about yay big to do our greens in later. It can be smaller. It can be this big. And we're just going to put that pan dry on a burner. And we're going to put our pine nuts in there to toast them up. Yeah, you can slide that right there. Uh, since since we have allergies to pine nuts, I'm going to make a gin and tonic while this is That's going right. On. Exactly. You can also always you can always serve the pine nuts on the side for people to put on themselves. Let's get that up top. And we'll get this on and then your pine nuts, you see them there Elizabeth? We're going to put them in a in a dry pan on medium medium high heat. No, because um, that's the last time, but we'll deal with everybody. Let's um, let's put uh, what did you say? Like a third of a cup or something like that. What was the recipe? Let's do a, like a quarter cup to a third of a cup of pine nuts. And and it doesn't have to be measured. You like you can just throw them right in a couple of good handfuls. It's decoration on our greens later, so it doesn't have to be. Perfect, but yeah, and throw them right in and then shimmy shake your pan so that you can get them spread all around. And awesome, now we've got our pine nuts are toasting, our potatoes, I'm gonna turn them even down a little bit more. They're cooking beautifully. Do you wanna see? I'll show you ours. So now we've got our pine nuts toasting. And you'll smell those and they'll start to get a little brown. And look how good our potatoes, they're bubbling away. I turned them down a little and they are gonna be incredible. We've got that. All right, now, next thing we wanna do is we wanna get our golden raisins. If you got them, you're using them. They're here and we're gonna have a little bowl. And we're gonna put golden raisins in a bowl and we're gonna put like a third of a cup to a half a cup of orange juice on them to make them moist and sort of puff them up. And All right, so quick thing place. before you go any further, Susie. Uh, yeah. Julie has got a small nonstick pan. Uh, she's trying to keep things frying, but uh, I think she's she's looking at scraping stuff off the bottom, which makes me think that, that her oil is too high, correct? It, it might be not only because Julia stepped away, you might have not only it might be too high, so definitely turn it down right now. You might also have not put enough oil. Did you see how much oil we had, Julia? It's, it's like, the entire bottle. you know, we almost used that whole bottle, but again, we're gonna reuse it later. Okay, perfect. And, um, and that will keep things, I think, a little bit um, easier to control. If you, if you don't have enough oil, they're gonna start, yeah, frying up. So put your, put your pan down nice and low. Is this a good amount of raisins or do you want more? Uh, that's more than enough for me. I'm, I'm saying like a third of a cup. The reasons are going in the greens. I don't love a lot of sweet with my greens. So I just want a little like, whoa, what was that? That's yummy. And then we're gonna, um, I don't use orange juice in my life. So we have an orange. We're gonna cut it in half and we're gonna squeeze it into the thing. I got one of these drinks. If you're not a raisin fan, can you, and it's for a little sweetness, can you do like a craisin or something like that? Yeah, do a craisin, but put, okay. them in the, put them in the OJ for sure because uh, they'll plump them up. Cool. And I'm not actually like a raisin and food fan either, but this is a Catalonian dish and it, it's really good in there. So if you're not afraid, try it. So we're doing ours and you can do it right over those, honey, because you might as well just use the whole thing. And even I like the little pulp you can scrape. If you're scrape, if you're squeezing your half an orange, put the whole orange in. Whatever you got in a in a whole orange works for me. And what were the other options for besides orange juice? You could do what I mean, if you don't have orange juice and you don't want to use OJ, you can use water when we get to that part. It's no problem. Or you, you can put a little bit of boiling water on your raisin or your raisin. And that'll plump them up, and that'll be the liquid we're going to need later. You can use wine, you can use apple juice, you can use apple cider vinegar. There's always a solution because this is just going to be a little something that flavors our greens and makes them more interesting. Oh, awesome. Yeah, go for it. 
So Elizabeth is using the reamer. I don't know if anybody out there um, is squeezing, but the reamer is a great tool. You pop it in and you squeeze around it and it can go right into your thing. It's spectacular. In the bucket. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Oh, and the orange juice smells so good over here. Amazing. So it's kind of good that we didn't have the orange juice down. Orange oh juice down. Oh, I'm no. Guys, it shows it's okay to make mistakes. That's right. Oh, Where's no. Ryan and you know? All right, don't step in it, honey. I'll get you some shoes. Luckily, we had more than we needed. Yeah, yeah don't even know. worry about more. That's no plenty. Yeah, that is fine. We have a lot. And we'll get rid of those. We have these things happen. We'll take off your socks one way or the other. <laughs> okay, everything's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> I can't wait to rewatch that and see the moment that I. It's slow motion. Actually, look what I gave her. I gave her the tippiest dumb bowl. How was she supposed to not spill it? <laughs> but it's a cute bowl. It's a cute little bowl. We're going to add the tiniest splash of boiling water to ours just to give us more liquid. And those are golden, literally golden. Set them aside. All right, Gigi, you got your raisins done? I'm good, I got them there. They're ready. Right. Go peek at your potatoes and shake your nuts. <laughs> Susie, oh, boy. are you kidding me? Thank you. Did you burn them? No. no, shake your nuts. <laughs> I put it out of the ball, boys. That has so many meanings. That, I, you know, listen. It, you don't have any, or I wouldn't have said that if it was Ryan. I would have been so, you know, something. <laughs> All right, so oh, our nuts are so close. We want a little color on the nuts. When they start smelling, when you smell nuts, shut it down. And our potatoes are amazing. How are your potatoes? Our potatoes are looking really good. Sweet, let's see, do we have enough time? Let's go to the next thing real quick. Let's get, let's do Ooh, that's what our potatoes look like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Push them around a little bit, they look great. That's exactly what mine are looking like too. Amazing, all right, toasted on us. Let's go ahead and do a couple cloves of garlic for our greens later. Everybody should have a handful of them peeled. We're just going to do two right now on our reamer, which are our microplaner. You don't have a microplaner, chop it really fine or put it in one of those thingies or whatever you got to get it nice and tiny because it'll burn if we don't. And yep, exactly. All right. And luckily we have the ch -ch -ch, so we can do ours that way. How do you not hurt your fingers? My nuts are pretty toasty, so as soon as Elizabeth's done with this, I'm going to say shut the heat down and you can leave them right in that pan until they cool a little bit. Awesome. So two nice cloves of garlic. I'll get you, you know, we'll put them in that dish for when we do our greens and then this is our pile for the romesco, which is next. And you can use your knife or you can just also look, watch this. And that'll get it out too, and you mm -hmm. can use your finger, or your knife, mm -hmm. or the top. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna shut those nuts down. If, you, if your guys' nuts are doing the same thing ours are, that you should probably shut those down. If you leave them in the pan, it's fine, but shut them off so they don't get too burnt. We want them toasty. Oh, it smells amazing. It smells so good. And they'll keep toasting up in the pan off, but they won't burn. So turn your pan off and leave those right alone. Susie, when you say cloves of garlic, uh, yep. you know, Elizabeth showed us about six cloves of garlic. Well, we had you prepare six for today because we're gonna use some more for the romescue, but just do two on your microplaner or whatever you're doing to mince your garlic for the greens. We're doing our greens garlic first. Yeah. We're getting basically all the little parts ready so that when we put our dish together, we have our mise en place, our new mise en place, which will be for 
me. And then those last ones, Elizabeth, just kind of gather them and randomly wet. You don't even use your fingers, even like this. What? Last little bits, but just like chopping them with your knife with your other hand right out of the way. Sounds very professional. <laughs> those ends we don't want to waste them amazing amazing and I think we will um let's see how our potatoes are and then because we've got two other little jobs we could do I'm gonna stab one I'm stabbing a potato oh yeah the potatoes are oh hotter than pop but they're good so, so we should everybody take one, take one potato out. Mine okay. is super soft, so I'm gonna shut mine down. But make sure your potatoes have a nice softness that we don't want them to turn to mush because we still have to cook them in the tortilla. So what do you think? How do you feel about yours? Yeah. Well, so mine are, uh, they're, they're soft, but they're definitely, like if I were to cut it with a knife, you can feel it going through. It's not mush at all. That's perfect, because we still have to cook it in the tortilla form. So leave so, it, turn it off. If us are on board together, then I'm going to say everybody shut your potatoes down. Okay. Don't worry about salt or anything like that, because we've got that all in the egg mixture. Were you with us when we did eggs, Jen? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So. Julia is drinking Spanish wine. Say it again. Julia is drinking Spanish wine, I believe. Uh, the Ribera del Duero. The Ribera del Duero is amazing. I'm going to bring this over here. The next bit is a little bit dangerous. So everybody take your time. Oh, oh boy. Had a little incident with our thingy. OK. So you may be getting a visitor uh, soon. I'm guessing that Amina is near you and you're going to get a glass of wine. Oh, oh my no. gosh, that sounds amazing. Amina, she's always the best looking out for me. All right, so we're going to get our spider. If you have a spider, this is the time to pull that out. I know everyone doesn't have that. You can get a little, um, you can get a little sieve. You can get a slotted spoon. Let me pull one of those out too. What we want to do now is we want to get these potatoes out of the oil and into, I have a bowl on the table, honey, with the handle there, and into a bowl. So I like to get the bowl close to where I'm going. Nope, I'll let you do it after I do one to show. And if you have two utensils of some kind that you can use together, it's amazing. And we can always dump the oil off if you get the oil to come along for the ride. But watch how I'm going to do it. I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to let as much of that oil as I can drip off and I'm going to put it in the bowl. I'll do one more and then I'll let Elizabeth take over. It's great if you have a spider because it does just go right through. All right, get as much of that oil off as possible and in your bowl. All right, Elizabeth's going to take over on that. Give her a better... My camera angle I worked on all morning. It's lost cause now. There we go. At least I have part of your face in it. Okay, so potatoes are coming out. Nuts are totally off and sitting in the pan. Fantastic. So these are gonna all come out into a bowl and then we're gonna do one other little job while they cool down just a touch. And then we're gonna put the egg mixture on top of them and let that kind of soak into the, to the potato mixture just a little bit. But we wanna get, we wanna let them cool down a touch because we're not looking to scramble our eggs. That's fine, because also we have this we have this awesome bowl that has the thing, so later we can even try to dump a little more oil off. Oh, that was a good that was a good idea, Susan. Using you think the I should you think oh. I should have mentioned that ahead of time? You know, maybe <laughs> I would have picked that bowl instead of the big round one I handed to Pat. That's okay <laughs> because you know what you can do is you can take them from this bowl and put them into your eggs instead of. Instead of dumping the egg mixture on, you could put the potatoes in your egg and then your oil will be at the bottom. 
Okay. Susan, do we do we drain uh, the excess oil that might be in the bottom of our bowl no. of potatoes? You Pat wasn't paying attention oh. to that. All that? right. So the next thing we are going to do now is we're going to if you have a spider, you're going to sort of here I'll throw that in there. We're going to sort of tip your oil. And then all the little bits that are left in it will kind of fall to the bottom. And you'll get as much of that out of there as you can. And then later, we're going to worry about sieving this out. We're not doing that right now because it's it's too hot. It's too dangerous. We don't need anybody to get burnt. Right now, we're just going to leave our potatoes alone for a minute. We're going to leave our oil in our oil. Your oil is off, right? Yes, oil is off. So, potatoes are being ignored. Right, so we're gonna let that we're gonna let that cool down for a minute because it's too hot to do contend with right now, and we're gonna need that pan and not nearly that much oil later. Okay, but see how much oil is left? Like practically what we put in. Right. So don't worry about your calories, everybody. We just took a whole bunch of it out. But all right, we're going back to the Michael is on board, just so you know. Who is Michael? Michael. Spectacular. Oh, this is a great meal for Michael, steak and potatoes. Okay, next step, we're gonna make our remescu. So get your get your food processor. Ours is on the table, honey, if you have one. If you don't have one, you use your blender. If you don't have one of those, use your stick blender, your immersion blender, but you're gonna to wanna to use kind of a deep bowl so that doesn't spit around on you. Have it made to the perfect level. Oh, Come on, Anamina. I think the wine's here. I do too. It's open. <laughs> oh, she's got wine in her hand. She can't get it. Hi, honey. <laughs> Come on. Come on in real quick. All right, we're going to add a little bit more time to our. Come on in, girls. We have a new special delivery of Spanish wine from the hey. girls are cooking upstairs. This is how we do it, New York City style. I love yeah. it. Good wine from one floor to the other. Thank you so much, <laughs> girls. And you'll come on later and show us your food when it's done. I love it. Cheers. Bye. All right. Cheers. You too. You have a nice day too, honey. <laughs> so thank you, Julia. Okay, back to work. All right. So I don't know if anyone, um, like, get your food processor set up, put your blade in, you're going to use your regular old blade, and then get it locked in, because it's hard to do after you get all your ingredients in there, that's always a mistake that happens. Get your, your bowl locked in, in place before we start, and all we're going to do is dump. So, get your jar of roasted peppers. I cleaned them and dumped off the juice, so they're ready to go. So just dump them right in. Oh. If you wanted to cut them down a little, you can, but it's not necessary. And then get your jar of sun-dried tomatoes. I think ours is a big one. Let's see, um, do we want to use all of them? Hold them right in and let's see, I'll tell you if we need to stop. A little bit of the oil from those sun-dried tomatoes, no problem because we add oil to this recipe but we do want to kind of keep track of how much, so pull them out of the oil, and then we'll use that sun-dried tomato oil while we're making our sauce, if, if we have, if you have it. I think. Yeah, so we got like an eight ounce bottle of uh, sun-dried tomatoes. How many we, how many ounces will we go on? How much you think? Well, this is seven Ours ounces. Is seven, and I'm thinking that we should each eat one and put the rest in, so about that many. So you guys leave about, leave about five or six of them out. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Then you want to put two big fat cloves of garlic. If they're small, put three. Because garlic, you can't go wrong in this sauce, you know, like let's even add that little one. Okay, perfect. Then you want to put a half a cup of your almonds. They can be toasted, they can be raw. It doesn't matter. You've got your half cup right here. And you know, you wanna you wanna be generous. But so far we've been oh perfect. Let me put just a couple more. I, mean, I think there's a few more over there. Just to what the heck, nut it up. Pat, I see a lot of questions. Everything all right? 
Yeah, it's just uh, we got a me too. That's all. Uh, I, I bought sun dried tomatoes, but not in oil. Is no, there any worry about that? No, we're gonna use our we're gonna use our oil from the uh, from the pan if you don't have any in there. And even if you do have oil in your sun dries, oh, I get it. She means for the moisture. No right. worries. We're chopping this all up. Nope. Uh, okay, so we've got our nuts. Next up, we're gonna put it like a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I don't like this really hot, hot. I like it hot from the garlic, but not hot from cayenne. That we're gonna save for our thing. So I go with a quarter teaspoon, and sometimes I put a little paprika. Paprika is not in hardly any recipes for romesco. I know it's a little bit of a battle, but um, because I told everybody that we were using it, we can put some in. <laughs> So if, if you uh, if you have the sun dried tomatoes without oil, what you're saying is just don't add um, oil. No, we're gonna the recipe needs oil anyway, so don't worry about that right now. Just throw them in. How much of that? Like in a quarter teaspoon of the paprika as well. If you like a little bit more of a kick, you feel free to kick it up, but I wouldn't like taste this recipe the first time. And next time you make it, if you say that thing could have been hotter for me, you go for it. And no bets for later. So I like the okay. Paul's next got a question here, Susan. Paul says, uh, I don't know what scribe means, but scribe, what was the proportion of red peppers to sun-dried tomatoes? Because the sun-dried tomatoes traditionally come in a jar that's like 16, 12 to 16 ounces. I'm good with that. This is, um, it's a sauce, it's a spread. It's a, you know, it's gonna taste amazing if it's not the perfect proportion, but basically we did, what was our uh, peppers, Elizabeth, 16? It's called a 16 ounce jar of peppers, but really there's probably 12 ounces of pepper because it's packed in all that liquid and they count that. So let me just show. Yeah, those 12, so yeah. essentially check it out. We have a jar about the yay size of peppers, yay size of sun-dried. And we kept a couple of sun-dried out to eat. And ben, ben is asking, uh, can we go over what should be in the bowl again? I'm guessing he's meaning in the blender. Absolutely. So we have our roasted peppers. We have our sun-dried tomatoes, the whole jar basically small and big of each. We have a half a cup of almonds. In Ben's case, he's got a half a cup of pecans. We have two to three cloves of garlic, depending on how the size, we want a decent amount of garlic. So we put two bigs and one small in ours. We have a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. We have a quarter teaspoon of paprika. You can give it or take it. If you don't have it, it's not changing anything. And that's what we've done so far. We still have some ingredients. Are we ready to go? Ready. Yeah, let's put a good solid tablespoon of, if you have it, the sherry vinegar. Ours is here. If you don't have sherry vinegar, red wine vinegar is fine. Okay. And just pour it right over the jaw, over the thing. Oops, you lost your, you, we're going to need a corkscrew. We have to uncork our vinegar. We opened this yesterday to make sure this didn't happen. All right, so get your, get your tablespoon ready. There you go. You did But you had to fill it. I did fill it. Susan, Pat, getting bossy again. Pat, you are you are just facilitating. Are she's, you not, she's, not, she's not measuring, Susan. She's just guessing. And she's That's looking okay. at me. It's okay. This is not a, we're not baking. You <laughs> pour your vinegar right into the tablespoon, right over the bowl, and let it flow over a little touch. Is smoked paprika okay? Smoked paprika is fantastic, even. And how much, okay. how much vinegar again? A tablespoon? A good solid tablespoon. You can pour it over the thing and let it overflow a little bit. All right, salt and pepper. Again, two good pinches. Yeah, that's right. Oh, three for Elizabeth. And then we can adjust that later. And then let's say 11 grinds of pepper. Yeah, do 15 if you want. You can't go wrong because it's a, it's a little spicy. It's a spicy side dish. And then put your lid on, lock it in. And before we start, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen because it is going to get noisy. We're going to need, it's, we're going to say it's going to be about a half a cup of oil, but it might not be all of it. Where's our sun dry, honey? This way. 
Uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to use this sun dried oil because it's got a lot of sun dried flavor. So I'm going to start with that. And then I'm going to take some of the oil from my pan on the stove with this other thing just to make a half a cup. Oh, Elizabeth, you should be doing this. I, I forgot. And then get yourself about a half a cup of oil. What we're going to do is we're going to drizzle it in the thing while it's chopping up. And we're going to add that oil that way. So we might not need all of it, but we might as well be ready for whatever we need. And yes, you can take that right out of your pan on the stove. A little bit less to do. So we have to all be ready to do this because it's going to be super noisy. All right. So we'll go for here's what we're going to do. We're going to pulse it like five or six times. Go for it. Make it 10. We'll do six more. All right. So now that part really hasn't chopped our nuts up as much, but we have gotten kind of a conglomeration. So let's pour a quarter of your oil in. Well, we'll sing our no, notes. just pour it right in freestyle. And because we know we're going to need enough perfect. We're going to need at least that much. Now we're going to let this thing rip. We're going to make a nice sauce. It's going to have texture by, by nature because of the nuts and things. So let's just all go. And when mine looks good, yours will look good. So go. <laughs> It looks good. Get your rubber spatula, take your top off, and scrape the sides down so all that big stuff. I was just going to ask that. We're going to get all the big stuff on the sides, get it down in, give it a little toss. You'll see that you have a beautiful texture coming already. Mm. I mean, it can't hurt at this point because what the heck? To get a little teaspoon, we'll taste it. Maybe we think it needs a little more sauce. It might need a little, or sorry, it might need a little more. Mm. It's amazing. It's too chunky, but it's so good. Really good. So good. And oh. that's when that that's, that's going to wow. But it needs a good bit more uh, to, to get those nuts chopped. So well, let's let it rip. And while we're gone, we're going to need kosher salt, cayenne pepper, and your sheet of paper. Go. Sheet of paper? Got it. Got it. Kosher salt. any more oil because it came together nicely. I'm going to take a little spoon out. I'm going to try it. Wow, that's really unbelievable. This Isn't is called a romesco? Yeah. It's called romesco. Ah. It's so damn good. Mm. Wow. Ours is perfect. It doesn't need any more oil. If yours doesn't seem, here I'll show you mine again. If yours doesn't seem like that texture that you want, you can go ahead and put more oil in, but I don't think we need it. You don't want it to taste oily. You just want it to have enough room to process. So we're gonna just spoon that right into a dish to put on the table. And I've got one right there, the blue one. And bigger, bigger. a little trick for those of you who haven't used a lot of food processor, if you put your finger, whatever one, I have to use my middle because it's the longest, 
in the bottom, you can hold that blade in place. So when you dump it out with your thing, that blade won't fall out and cut you or get in your way or make a mess. All right, and I'll take this out of your way. We're you can use that sauce pizza. on a pizza. Yes, Spanish pizza, olives, romesco. Here we go. Ooh. Elizabeth, that's what we need to do at the lake. Spanish yeah, pizza. Chorizo. That sounds so good. Ooh. So Excellent. Uncle Mike, Hello. Uncle Mike just sent me a potato caramelized onion pizza idea. And I'm thinking we got it's potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, once you get down pretty low, you can set it down and pull the blade out and scrape around that. And now we're going to get back to eggs. How do the pecans taste? Oh yeah, we want to know how Ben's pecan uh, romesco is. Pat? Well, he, he listen, he's got to respond. I mean, <laughs> I can't read his mind. Bob says that her romesco sauce tastes awesome. Ben says, delicious, nutty. All right, his probably has a little more richness to it. And also the pecans are soft, so they probably really uh, turned into a nice nutty paste. Julia says it's so good. It's so good. Think of all the sandwiches you can put on this and save yourself for mayonnaise. Right, delicious. Yeah. Ellen Burgraff says it's delicious. I have to okay. say, really unbelievable. All right, stick a spoon in it and put it on the table. It's done. And let's get your eggs out. That's gorgeous colors. I don't even like spicy food. And I love it. Well, it's yeah. the perfect amount of spicy food. Well, our sheet of paper we're going to hold off on because we want to get these eggs going. So get your eggs in your potato bowls. If you have a bowl like we have, I, you know what, let's just do it with everybody the same. Now you're going to take your hot potatoes and put them into your egg dish. Use your same two utensils you had from before. And that way, if you have a bunch of oil in the bottom, we don't need to eat it. Potatoes, if it seems right. So potatoes into your egg mixture. And what I like do, let me get this thing ready. It's about halfway through, take a second and shuffle them around so you don't cook your eggs just in case it's still hot. I'm going to do it while Elizabeth's dumping. I'm just moving my eggs around so we don't scramble those eggs. Oh, we don't even have that much oil in the bottom of our thing, so we did a good job of getting them out. Awesome. Phenomenal. Now, the nice thing about getting this done right now is we still need a few more minutes before we have our tortilla cooked, but the eggs will sort of suck into the, the so potato good. and it'll make a it'll make a mixture that's a lot more friendly if you've ever made like an omelet or especially a big potato -y type omelet. It's hard to deal with when it's very loose and you have egg everywhere and you don't want the egg to stick. This is making it more of a all conge congealed thing so that when we go to put it in our pan, it's going to hold and we're going to build it up into a really great potato pancake tortilla. Susan, can you show us your, like the consistency? Mine yes. looks a little runnier than yours. That's okay. It's going to use all the eggs. You want the runny because this is supposed to have a little softness to the inside. And mine is not that runny, but look, it's, it's, is that like that? It's a little more runny than that. That's okay. You, Those your potatoes, potatoes are going to suck like it up. Little, there's, your potatoes um, are a little bit chopped up more than mine. No, it's okay. Whatever you have, it's going to suck up for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to pour it into the, the pan, and it's going to cook up no matter how wet or how dry yours is. It could be different every potato, every cook. And in Spain, they really like it poco hecha, which means like very not done at all. So they yeah. kind of even like the runniness in it. They like the runny a little more than I particularly do. But yes, if it's if it's hard in the center, they're not big fans unless they're having it cold the next day or later or something like that. But when they eat it hot, they like it soft in the middle. Say it yeah. again, Elizabeth. Poco poco hecha. Poco hecha. It means like. Al dente? A little bit done. 
a little bit a little bit done or a little bit not done, right? Is that like okay. Albany? Well, because you got it, you have an egg, so it is something of an omelet. So your egg is going to give it a lot of juicy quality. Or if you cook it a lot longer, or you let it set and you heat it up the next day, it's going to firm up. Still amazing and delicious. Mm. Okay, we are doing great. Let's get our board clear, and let's move on to our sheet of paper. Mm. We're gonna to get a little bit of an oil slip here. So now we're making the sauce for our steak. Get your sheet of paper out, put it on your counter, get your cayenne and your salt. So this sauce, I use it all the time. I actually have it in my fridge. When you're done, you're gonna do the same. If you have a good bottle, you're gonna keep it in your fridge. And you, what you'll do is you'll put a piece of plastic wrap on and then you'll put the top back over the plastic because you're gonna to wanna to use this a bunch after you make it. So I'm making a whole bottle this size. If your bottle is small, cut what we're doing in half. I'm gonna do less because I already obviously have a half a thing. So everybody for this size of bottle, what is that about? 12 ounces. 12 ounces or so, the size a little bit more of my hand. We're gonna do a tablespoon of cayenne and three tablespoons of kosher salt onto your sheet of paper. Elizabeth, you'll be Actually, you tea right? Oh, uh, so, you, not kosher table. Kosher salt, not cool. table. Yeah. Oh, okay. I never use table salt. You'll never hear me do it. Kosher salt. So three tablespoons of salt and one tablespoon of cayenne onto your sheet of paper. Just do one teaspoon of this and three of that. Yep. Okay, because this is going to be some spicy tomatoes, but we're not, we're not using a ton of it. And, you know, again, it's, uh, it's one of those things you wouldn't eat it and say that's delicious, but it makes the steak amazing. So the reason we did it on this sheet of paper is because then we can fold the paper and we can just zoop right into our jar and not lose it all. And we don't have to clean a funnel or anything like that. Just get your salt and your cayenne into your jar. And then you're just gonna go to your tap if your tap water is good and your bottle if it's not. And it, it does work a little bit better with warm water because it melts it. So put some nice, fill that jar like almost all the way with warm water. <laughs> put your lid back on. Nope, that's just for storage. Let's throw that out because that was gross. All right, so give it like Elizabeth's doing. Put your finger over the spout so it doesn't spray around and shake the crap out of it so we melt all that salt and cayenne into our, into our Argentinian mixture. Susan, uh, Julia's wondering if the potatoes and eggs are just sitting for now. That's correct, just, yeah? Just sitting. We want to give them a good 10 minutes to kind of marry, and then we're going to cook them up. We have a couple of little housekeeping jobs to do while we're waiting. How much salt, Ellen Burgraff is asking? You said three tablespoons and one three. tablespoon of cayenne, correct? I did, three to one tablespoons. I know it sounds like a lot, but we're not using, we're only gonna use a small, you know, we're spraying it onto our steak while we're cooking. It's not like we're gonna use all that, but you'll have it in the fridge for the next time. And yeah, you'll be able to kind of see from the bottom, ours is already kind of nicely um, and especially because we had some in that jar already. So now we have a new full jar. And if you started your grill at the beginning of this, you should check it because it's still burning. I don't know if you did it, but it's nice that you said that because now let's see, we've got to prep our greens and then we've got to cook our, yeah, it's still a little bit soon to fire your grill up, everybody. Get, give it another few minutes. All right, yep, so that's uh, Barb Conley, yes, salt and pepper and water. So three tablespoons of salt, one oh. tablespoon of- There's no pepper, Barb, there's two items. Wow, cayenne. Pepper, yeah, cayenne salt. And salt. One cayenne, three salt. So yes, no Barb. Pepper. Got it? Uh, yep, somebody, Julie just said, uh, I have two super spicy averse girls, any cayenne substitute. Cayenne shouldn't be that spicy, no, really. What, what you're going to do is when you cook your steak, Julia, 
just don't use that much or use uh, use more on yours and let like you'll have different like for us, we have these three pieces of steak, do one without any, do what do two with some, it's going to go directly we're going to basically be grilling one side down and we're just going to and I'm going to do a lot because it doesn't make the steak spicy I'm an Irish girl I don't like a lot of spice but it adds a ton of flavor because it's going fast and a lot of that heat's evaporating. I would try it on one and make sure you have one for the girls that's that's plain and you'll you'll know for next time the quantity that you want to use. I would do it in all of it because I don't think it makes it spicy at all. It doesn't. I'm going to do it with all of it and I'm not a big spicy fan either. All right, so now we need to get our greens out. Get your kale, your chard, your spinach, whatever you're making. Get that out. Susan, I should turn my grill off. I mean, turn it way down. We're not quite there. <laughs> We've got, I didn't uh, I, I didn't say turn the grill on yet, Pat. <laughs> I'm gonna run out of gas any minute now. When we start the potato, you can turn your grill on. Okay. Because the potato is going to take about five to seven minutes per side, maybe even a little more. I haven't made it in a bit, so get your greens. All right. So we got two kinds of greens. We've got Swiss chard and kale. I don't know if you have both, if you have one or the other, if you opted to get the, um, the spinach then you don't really have much prep work to do because there's not much prep. Spinach cooks perfectly, the, the spines cook perfectly. The shard, here's what happens. We take it, take a piece of shard or kale, you clean it the same way. And then you hold it with your hand that's not, that's your dominant hand. And with your other hand, you're kind of pushing it away from the stem. So now I have a stem and a handful of greens. You get it? Okay. Yeah. Got it. And then those, the green part, I like to tear it up smaller and put it in my bowl. Now, with the kale, well, I'll do a kale for you. My kale has a rubber band and the tie on it. So we want to keep our kale and our other greens separate because the kale, in fact, we're going to use it first. So let's do our shard over there. The kale cooks the slowest, so it needs the most time. So again, I usually take these little randos off. I'm gonna keep them and I'm holding it and I'm pushing with my thumb and my finger down away from the stem. So I have greens and a stem. The kale green, garbage. The shard green, keep it. We're gonna chop it up, it's delicious, okay? So if anyone doesn't get that, just shoot a text to Pat and otherwise get giddy up and get your greens done. So again, shard, keep the stem, kale, get rid of the stem. Exactly, because we're gonna chop like at least half of that, if not all of it up, we're gonna cook it because it tastes amazing. Like this little guy right here, that's a really tender little stem. If you have a big fat juicy stem, that might be more than we want. I'm gonna get rid of the fat end and keep the little skinny end. We want the tender stuff. And again, and I'm gonna chop that up after I get done with my greens. But the kale and the shard, or the if you have kale, keep the kale separate because that's gonna go first in the pan. And I'll get us another bowl for our shard. Okay. So we have two huge bunches here, so we might do it together. And everybody, if you're um, if you're caught up, great. If you need more time, let us know. You don't have to worry about your potatoes, but you do want to put your pine nuts out of that pan and into the dish because that's going to be the pan we cook our greens in. So I'll do that while Elizabeth is doing greens. <laughs> Susie, this pan of oil that we have, do we leave the oil right in the nonstick pan? Just for now. We're, we'll do that all together because I just want to have, a, uh, we don't need it until we cook our potato. And when we get to that part, we'll all, we'll all do it together. Very good. All right. Oh, Elizabeth's killing it on the greens. I'll do a couple shards. We have a lot of greens. What kind of greens are you guys cooking? 
We're doing spinach. You're doing spinach. So you're just uh, you're just holding right, holding firm. We are going to make another gin and tonic, if that's okay. That is perfect. Well, just for everybody else, if you're if you're afraid, if you've never had chard or kale before, or you think you hate kale, try again because there are some ways of cooking things that are better than others, and we're going to have a lot of flavor. We're going to have our fruit. We're going to have our nuts. We're going to have some red pepper flake. You know, try the different greens that you see when you're in the store. They're so delicious. They're good for you. They take, you know, they don't, you don't worry about overcooking them because they're hearty. That's my advice. Try these greens. They're so good. All right. Awesome. Kale fan. So Pat was saying yeah. he's, not a, he's not a huge kale fan. Who's that? Pat was saying he's not a big kale fan. Yeah. Um, too fibrous. He said it's too fibrous. So is it well, when you cook it down, it will get softer? I was just going to say, so a lot of times when you buy kale, they, they have it already all chopped up in the bag and they think they're doing you a big favor, but they're not because now you have that giant stalk in there and the stalk is not delicious and it doesn't cook anywhere near at the same rate that the leaves do. So that's why people end up, they, some people blanch their kale first. Some people give it a massage with oil. I do that for my kale salads, but I still take the stalk off because the stalk's not delicious. So it's all about people don't want to do that work. But look, Elizabeth did it in one minute. Right. It's done. And, uh, and it's people think, oh, kale, it's like supposed to be a garnish. But right now, like if I wanted to have a kale salad for the next three days, yeah. I put the tiniest bit of olive oil and some salt. And I just kind of use my hand and I massage it through and it changes the kale completely. It's the difference between a delicious kale salad and like, why would anyone eat this thing? It right. tastes terrible because you can't eat it. Like you're like, it's like eating it right now. Like I would just chew it and chew it. And then eventually I'm just gonna swallow, but the oil and the salt tenderize it. And so then all you need is a little Parmesan and some dressing and you have like the most delicious kale salad. So it's just a matter that kale is, it's rougher, but all the things about it that make it that way are what are so good for you and also so flavorful. So try, try it. And then also, how do you store that? Just in an airtight and it'll, or a Ziploc even, it'll stay for days. I remember you taught me to put a wet paper towel over like fruit and stuff. Would you so do that? that's a good question Elizabeth has. So a lot of times with vegetables and fruit, I'll say put a damp paper towel in there. But for the kale, if you treated it with the oil and salt, it's just going to make it rot faster. So the whole thing we're doing with the salt and oil, or in this case, we're cooking it, is keeping you from needing to do that. But that does get you a little more mileage from some of your fruits and veggies. Well, Ellen, Burgraf, Ellen Burgraf loves uh, kale chips. Oh, kale chips are great. The thing is, you have so much work to do, and then you eat them in like five minutes. But I hear you. I think they're awesome too. So I'm going to take while Elizabeth's finishing up. I'm taking a pile of this the stems. I don't want a ton of these stems in my um, greens because it's too much. But boy, it's beautiful color. They're so red and amazing, and they're going to make for some great color. So I'm just going to cut it across the whole stack into pieces about yay big just cutting through those stems. And I'm gonna save like, I don't know, I guess like a cup of them. And I'm gonna leave them right on my board and keep them separate. Cause I love, I love the stalks. I love the greens, the kale, and it has such a pretty color. When you make sauces with this, it turns it pink. It's amazing. So this I'm just shard? With the shard, yeah. The stalk of the kale, garbage at all times. All right. I need a hairband for this next section because it's getting hot in here. Oof. Okay, so does everybody have their greens done? Done. Tell us if you need more time. Otherwise, we're gonna carry on and we are getting close. Jen, Jen had to open the bag. She's been done for a while. She's done. She's got that bag open. Now let's listen. If Jen's just using spinach, that means someone else probably is too. 
this spinach is going to turn into nothing. So as far as I said, by two bunches, when we were talking heartier greens, I should have mentioned if you're getting spinach only, you need a lot. It turns into nothing really quickly. Like this amount of spinach, I could practically just eat myself. It's gonna turn into like that much. So um, for tonight, you know, you guys will share what you have. I'm sure Ryan won't need any. So if you're good. <laughs> But um, yes, if you're using the, the softer greens, you do, you do, um, it does wilt down to practically nothing. So, you know, buy almost one of those small boxes I buy for each person when I'm catering because it turns, it goes down to nothing. But everybody else ready? Got your bags open, got your greens ready? I think we're totally prepped up for time to go to potato. Okay, so now we're going to get to the part where Pat keeps asking about what to do with this doggone oil. So I'm coming back over here. At this point, the oil is probably, this thing is so annoying. I think that if this- If I were producing, Susan, I would say you should keep that to yourself. What's that? If I were a producer, I would say you should keep that to yourself. Yeah, but I'm doing like tech right now. So I'm the tech person at the same time. I trying to get Elizabeth's head in the shot, but she's so tall in my thing. I worked on it for ages today. All right. But her so nails oil. look fantastic. The what does? Her nails look fantastic. Oh, no doubt. Okay. So at this point, everybody get something. I'm going to use this pitcher. You can use another, you can use a bowl. You can use one of those bowls like, uh, where's our potatoes? -y? Oh, we already used it. Um, hold on. If you have one of these, it's kind of handy or something. We're going to dump our oil in. And listen, we're not going to worry too much about sieving it out right now because it's hot. We don't want to burn ourselves. We don't want any issues. You can do that later when you're all cleaned up and everything is done for now. We're just taking the oil and just slowly and carefully get it in something else. Ben wants Here. to know how fine he should chop the kale. Uh, I just tore mine and I chopped the, uh, yeah, he can, he can chop it into, you know, it's going to wilt. It doesn't matter. I tore mine up. Where's ours, honey? You know, I tore mine into pieces about the big. Okay? So I dumped my oil out and I left in not that much, very little, like a coating around the whole bottom. And if there's a little bit of scraggly onion, I don't care because that's already in our thing. So you want what I guess it would be about the equivalent of about two or three tablespoons left in your pan and swirl it all around to get it up on the sides and then turn your heat on to about medium. Perfect. So we're gonna just give that just a minute to heat up. So this time our goal is to get this thing cooked and brown. I'm gonna move this out of the way so we don't have a situation like the orange juice. And I've got my potatoes, which have literally turned into almost like a cake porridge. Batter. It's like a cake batter, exactly. So it doesn't have to be too hot. You can go ahead and, and turn your pan away. Give it one last swirl of the oil before you go in with your potato and go ahead and slide your potato mixture all the way right in. Susie, how, how chunky should the potatoes be and should we put the entire bucket of uh, potatoes in? So let's just say at this point they are as chunky as they are. Whatever they are is perfect. And yes, you want to put the entire contents, even the little wet egg dregs, get your spatula in there, get everything in your pan and you'll see it's literally the perfect amount because we had it so full before and now it's cooked down. It's just see how Elizabeth is just perfect. So if there's a, so if you don't have a nonstick pan or you have a really small one only, should you? So we addressed that earlier. You just have to have less potatoes, but you can, 
put it all put it in as much as you can fit without with having some room to to jiggle or whatever but it doesn't matter how full it is this thing's going to turn into something else it's every it's every time something am i right <laughs> i used to do it down here maybe i'm going to go back for that and then just here, hold that for a minute so people don't think i'm mental take oh, it yeah awesome this is where I usually put it, but that wasn't tall enough for you. Isn't so. she pretty? <laughs> and then Elizabeth, take that red spatula that you think and go around the sides of the pan. I need to show you this. All right. Yes. You want to take that spatula and almost make a curled edge. Like give yourself a nice little edge because that's going to make that thing easier to flip. Believe it or not, we're going to flip this thing. It's going to be amazing. So get it, get a nice edge. And I see ours is starting to bubble up. That's great. And then watch this. After you're done with your edge, like Elizabeth, give it a little shake. And you can see that it's pretty loose. Go in a little bit deeper over there where you saw that it wasn't loose. Yep. And we're going to start getting a crust on the bottom of this thing. Amazing. Now this is going to take a little bit, maybe I'm thinking here, I'll see if I can get this back up. I'm thinking it's going to take five plus minutes on each side. We'll just play. We're going to, we're going to watch it. We're going to enjoy watching Elizabeth cook it. So Susan, what are some, uh, what are some, some tips on, I mean, I, I'm wondering if ours might be a little more oily than yours or a little more eggy than yours that somebody else might see. How do I know when it's, you know, I see you pushing down the edges. Are we looking for a little crustiness around the edge and a little Yes, shape? we're looking, we're looking for a crust literally the whole thing now. We're not worried about brown anymore. We're looking for brown. We're going to use our spatula even to kind of bend in the sides. So we're giving it a nice round edge. Hopefully you can see that. And it's starting, yes, it's going to start crisping up. It's going to start getting some color on the bottom. We need to make sure that it's moving. That's why we're not worried about oil. Whatever oil we don't eat, we don't eat because we're not going to, we're going to let it sit for a little bit. Any oil that we're cooking it in that's egregious is going to, and once in a while I do take my spatula and I might go a little bit farther into the inside of the thing so that I know later it's not going to give me too hard a time with the big flip because I do feel like it's stuck there a little and normally in this nonstick pan I wouldn't. But that's all right. We're gonna, we're all gonna make sure that this thing is jiggling before we flip it. If so, you still uh, like Don is excited to flip it. I can tell already. And right. Bob, he's got a little bit of oiliness too. So what I I'm gonna do that. so everybody feels a little bit better. Even I'm going to dip into my oil. I'm gonna pour some oil right around the edge of the whole thing. And then Elizabeth's going to go in with that spatula again and keep shimmy shaking it and going in with your spatula so that you're, you know, doing everything you can to make sure when we flip this, it's going to come out. I need some shaking, honey. There you go. See how it's starting to become one homogenous thing? That's what we want. Ours is too high. I'm going to turn it down a touch because we want it to be cooked be, or brown, you know, cooked before it's too brown. Amazing. Awesome. So that's going to take a few more minutes and I'm going to show you what we do next. So, and don't fuss with it too much or it won't have a chance to set up and become something. So in the meantime, everybody get a flat pan lid or a plate or a platter or something that's nice and flat and larger than your pancake or larger than your cake. So I have this huge lid and it's awesome because it's flat. I'll never throw this away even if I don't keep the pan because it's straight up flat. You can use a pizza pan, you can use a platter, you can use anything that's flat, 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 flat because at the point where we're gonna flip this, it's going to be a little bit dangerous. So we're going to do everything we can to plan for it. I've got a handle on mine. It's perfect. It's going to go over the pan. 
I'm gonna get a mitten on my right, my left hand, just in case when I flip it, there's some oil that gets away from me. And I'm even gonna take it to my sink. I'll have Elizabeth, you know, do the first one so she can see or, or take the camera. Give that some nice edges. So instead of like that chopping, I want you to kind of pull it. So we're getting a nice flat curled edge and it'll look so beautiful. All right, now I'm gonna turn our, our back up because I feel like it's getting close. So. Susan, before you go any further, got another question. Uh, yeah. You know the two garlic cloves that we chopped, what was I supposed to do with those? I think I missed a step. We haven't done anything, yeah? No, we haven't. Those are going in our greens. The raisins and the garlic and the pine nuts are all for your greens and the sauce and the squeezy bottles for your steak. All that, right. part of the, that part of the meal is going to go zippity zip. So we want this potato to at least be flipped to the other side before we start. However, right. at this point, if you're grilling, go ahead outside and turn your grill on and shut the lid and get it nice and hot. All right, before you go any further, Susie, can you just show your uh, your pan? Because ours is definitely looser than yours. Okay, so here's my pan. It's very wet in the middle, but when I shake it, it's kind of now, just now, starting to become one unit. We're not gonna be able to flip it until you feel confident that that's one unit. It doesn't matter if it's wet, those are gonna, that's gonna cook. If you feel like, can I see yours? Yeah, mine is still definitely too loose. Let me see. If you look at mine, it, uh, hold on, hold on. Mine is, if when I shake it, it's not okay. holding together like yours, so. Okay. So, I'm thinking it needs to go a little longer. It does. It does. And also, I want you to watch what I do here. This is the part that Elizabeth's been doing. I want you to be using your spatula and pulling in to create this like nice edge so that it's kind of turning it into a cake or a or omelet or whatever you, word you want to use. And that if you feel like yours is super, super loose and you don't trust it, you can go ahead and put your cover over it to get it tightened up a little bit. That's fine, but I'm not going to because ours is awesome. So we, we definitely need to put the cover on. Ours is not holding together like yours. And, and, I, and I think our we're, potatoes are a little bit bigger than yours too. Gonna, it doesn't matter. You could have had, we could have had shaved potato. We could have had huge rounds. It's all fine. That is all going to become this, this, could, this recipe is done a thousand ways. So the thing is, when it's time to flip for me, it might not be time to flip for you and that's okay because this dish needs to sit and set up. You can even turn your oven on 200 and keep it in there. So we're all gonna wait till we're all ready to flip this thing. I might have to flip mine sooner, but we're not gonna finish it. You know, we'll finish together, so no worries. All right. And again, keep taking your pan and giving it that shimmy shake, like ours is totally set now, but it, I can tell that it's not brown on the bottom and I want it to have some good color because we're never going back to that side. You know what I mean? Yeah. And later we'll pick the prettiest side for the top. And but Ellen Burgraff asked what the orange juice is for. Ellen, the orange juice goes in with the golden raisins. That's right. That's plumping your raisins right now. It's gonna go in your greens uh, at the last minute. Ours is looking awesome. Yeah, I mean, so again, good. we've, uh, this is, is, have you made this before, Elizabeth? Yeah, but I made it and I guess I wasn't doing it right because Nino came in halfway through and he was like, let me just take over from here. <laughs> well, I so mean, these kind of things, before. I mean, I also hear the nerves and Pat, like these things take practice, you guys, yeah. but trust on this. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be perfect. And they're not all going to be the same, but they're all going to taste the same and they're all going to be good. All right. So again, you don't, you don't have to with a tortilla also, because like Elizabeth said, what's the term for loose inside? Poco hecha. Because you want a poco hecha. Even if when we flip it, it's a loosey goosey, we're going to put a little, um, we have plenty of fat in ours, but you can put a little more fat in. And when you slide it in, all that juicy stuff that Pat's worried about, that's going to be in the bottom of the pan at that point, and that will cook it right up. So even if it's still loose, ours is very loose in the in the middle of the top part. It's going to be fine because we just need it to be firm enough 
to flip out and then scoosh right back in to the pan that's going to be hot and all that loose stuff that you're worried about the egg and the moisture it's going to firm up on the bottom side does that make sense yes that does make sense awesome now, sometimes when I'm making these, I cheat and I look to see if it's brown enough and sometimes I have to slide it back in, but I don't wanna torture you guys first time doing this for doing that flip thing more than once because it is, it's a little sketchy. I always put a mitten on that covers all the way up my arm and I hold the pan, the pan with that side. No, I put the mitten on the side that I use for the lid so that if any juices run off of it when it's upside down, they're not gonna hit my arm. If you don't have a mitten like that, have long sleeves or a towel or something on your arm there, because when we flip this over, something might you know, run off the side of it. So you wanna have that arm that you're holding the lid with protected with either a mitt or at minimum a towel, a sweatshirt, like something on your arm in case some of that hot oil or something, the, the runny stuff from the inside of your tortilla runs off. Do you know okay. what I mean? Are yep. we gonna that makes sense. Scoop some extra oil out or is this all gonna cook out? It's um, probably gonna, we're gonna need the oil for the second, oh, you mean for when we flip? It's gonna, that's why we're, that's a great question. So Elizabeth's like, we have so much oil in there. How are we gonna do it? We're gonna do this flipping business right over the sink. I'll do it and Elizabeth will hold the camera before anyone does it. Then if you have questions, you can ask me. In fact, I'm gonna take a quick cheaty peek at the bottom of this baby and see how close we are. It's brown. So why don't, while you guys are all cooking away, why don't we show you the flip? And again, I'm gonna do it over my sink. So even I can hold it on a little bit of an angle. And if there's fat coming, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it run away from my arm, not on my arm so that everything is safe. Elizabeth will show you. So just let yours cook while I do mine and you'll get the idea. All right, so I'm over my sink full of dishes. I'm covering it and I might even let it rest for a second because I want to be like super ready and I don't want to, like I want to get my positioning and then I'm going to do it quick over. But see how I'm letting the oil run off the back instead of where my arm is? And then I can scooch it around. Ooh, Ooh. We went a little too far even. And then you take this side. We have a good bit of oil left, so I'm not worried. And you put the back side of your pan yeah. and you scoot that baby right back in. And I would say, since mine was that done, you guys might want to give it a try. If you have any questions before you go, shoot them out. Pat, you're gonna, Ooh. we'll watch for the questions. Well. Well, so I'll tell you my concern. I can smell the brown and my my potatoes are not together. If I were to tip them up on a uh, pan top like that, it would break apart. Okay, well, I'm going to say at this point, it's okay because all that wet's going in the bottom of your pan. I'm going to shut ours off because we're ahead. It, get your pan and then... Pat, when you flip it, I want you to be ready um, to slide it right back in. And all that, if there's wet and stuff that you're not happy with, it's going to firm up on the second side and we'll make the second side your top. You know what I mean? We're, we're sure that that side maybe will be your more. Okay. So Pat, do the flip. Love it. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm about to burn myself. Like no, what? don't. Don't move it. Don't do the flip until you're ready, ready, ready. Have your thing ready and go. Oh, nice. And then scooch the pan around so you know you're not going to drop oh, it. Oh, it looks good. And slide it back in nice awesome. and slow. See? Gorgeous. And that bottom, we'll just make that your top later. You might keep your lid so you can, you know what I mean? You'll flip it one more time to serve it and your bottom's going to firm up. And it's great that yours didn't work as perfectly as ours because that's probably what happened to a lot of people but no oh. work that's potatoes you guys it's going to taste amazing and the bottom side's now going to tur turn into your top you know it'll be gorgeous my ours too because we burned our bottom a little bit and we we probably should have taken ours off a little bit sooner but it's nice and crispy and we're probably not cocoa 
Rocco. And then we're gonna take our spatula again. And again, do your, go around your outsides. And this side's not gonna be as sketchy, but do give it the shimmy shake to make sure it's not sticky. If it's sticking, we gotta get a little oil under there. We don't need any more oil in ours. Ours is firm, it's fine. And we want that bottom side a little less brown than this side. So we're gonna keep our eye on that. And in the meantime, I think we might, uh, let's see. All right, we told everybody who's doing steak to grill their steak or to get their grill on. So I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna get our grill pan on. How did everyone do, Pat? Any comments? Well, I got one from Paul. It says uh, it worked, but caused some potatoes to stick in the pan, so adjusted them. And I think that that goes to your shimmy shake. I know you use that term and I love it because right. it, it, it's, I do it with my eggs. I do it with everything in the nonstick pan. I give it the shimmy shake to keep it from sliding. And then I know right. it's not stick. And then also in that same note, if, um, if you, you can sheet your spatula way down in too, if you feel like it's not working, your shape, you can't get your shape before you flip, you want to get under there. And you can also listen, if things went wrong and you have potatoes in your pan, leave it on the lid, have someone else scrape those potatoes off and stick them on there and slide it in. It's no problem. As long as one side looks good, no one's even gonna know. And second, no matter what this thing looks like, if it turns into hash browns, it's gonna be delicious. That's, so, that's what mine might be, hash browns, but they're, it's going. No, you're gonna get it. So I feel like ours is probably brown and we want to keep it a little bit loose in the middle. So I'm only going to let this go for one more minute. So I'm going to go ahead and get our grill pan ready for steak. Even if you're still cooking, why don't you go ahead and get your grill pan or your cast iron pan or whatever you're cooking your steak in. Susan, I remember you mentioning to turn your oven on at 200 for a reason of the potatoes. Would this no, be? That's, that's only if, if yours was going along really quickly and getting and getting too done, you could have moved ahead and that happens with that now. And and you can you can always put it in. Today we're not going to do that because we want this thing to set up. We don't want it to be so hot that it won't kind of what's going to happen in the 10 minutes while we're cooking our steak and our greens is it's gonna rest and it's still gonna be piping hot, no worries. And even this dish is quite often eaten room temperature. So if you, I was just only making that comment, like if somebody was getting way ahead and like, I, mine's gonna burn or I gotta flip it, then yes, you can put it in the oven, but there's no need for that today. We're all stove top. The only thing you need to have on right now is your, kidding me, your grill pan <laughs> and, How's your stove working? Uh, I, I, I paid three hundred and fifty dollars to get this burner working. He's coming back for the other one. So all good. So let's turn our grill pan on nice and high, high as you can get it. I, if you have a grill pan like this, leave the lid in it. We're not cooking with the lid, but it makes the pan nice and hot while you're preheating it. Then we're going to get rid of that. All right. So let's get our steak pans out. Very unusual, everybody, because we have all that salt in our marinade. We're not going to salt this thing. Can you believe it? I'm making a steak without salting it. For Julia and anyone who does, doesn't want to use the sauce, I'm going to say go ahead and put some salt and pepper on the ones you're not planning on using your gaucho marinade on. I am going to recommend trying it at least on one because you're gonna be surprised how amazing it is and how not spicy it is. Everybody else, we don't need, maybe let's just put a little ground pepper. We have so much cayenne, we don't really need to, but let's just pepper one side while we're getting our pan nice and hot. We did mention before, we're gonna need a plate to put this on when it's done. So get yourself a plate, because this thing is gonna cook fast. I'm turning my potatoes off because I have a really good feeling about them because Elizabeth and I have a second here. We might even cheat. We might even look at it. The second side doesn't have that much fat. And then Elizabeth, this is important here where you just want to adjust, you know? 
Oh, Ooh. so good. That's so that's perfect. our second side. Amazing. I might oh, let it go. Wow. Isn't that great? I'm going to put the pan back on and give it just another quick minute on that side. But wow. So Barb Conley just said All right. I'm going to leave mine off because Elizabeth Barb likes it like that. Barb Conley just sent us a picture of her potatoes. They look delicious. Mine are a little bit, uh, they're, they're not as solid as yours. That's okay. I, I mean, I did, I only did four potatoes. I think that's what you did and five eggs. And, and again, it's, uh, you know, if we weren't all cooking together, Pat, I might've just let that um, sit for a little bit longer and turn into a little more congenious marriage. All right, our steak is, our, our pan is hot. We're gonna just take a spray. We're not gonna go with all the big oil. We're just gonna use a little spray for stickery. I'm gonna hit the whole thing. We're gonna get a tongs and you're gonna get your squirt bottle ready. Elizabeth's got everything. Now we can literally fit everything in one pan. Can you guys or not? Do you need to do two rounds? Well, we're doing it on the grill. Pat's gonna take it out to the grill right now. All right, so Pat, anyone that's going to the grill, listen up before we start inside. You're gonna put them on the grill. You're gonna take your squirty bottle, give it a good shake, and you're just gonna hit the whole thing. You're not gonna go crazy because we don't want too much moisture. And you're gonna be fine outside, those of us inside, especially we can't turn our hood on because we're trying to talk to you. Put your hood on. Your eyes are gonna get a little watery, your throats, you might cough a little. This stuff is hot. I mean, it's the cayenne. It's gonna be in the air. If you wanna put your mask on, go for it. <laughs> uh, so uh, Pat, we're literally gonna do uh, two minutes, quarter turn so that you get your cross marks, three more minutes. Flip, same thing, two minutes, quarter turn. And all the while, wait, don't leave, all the while, keep giving it spritz, 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 because that's the flavor, okay? When the pan dries up, hit it again. Or come back in and see us. <laughs> okay, if anyone's grilling, go for it. If you have any questions, we'll be watching. All right, Elizabeth, use your hands or your tongs and throw those in. I can hear our pan sizzling without even any meat in it. And these guys are going to shrink up. So even if you crowd your pan a little bit, it's going to be okay because they're going to shrink. All right. So we've got, and I should have said pepper side down, but I did it. No big deal. All right. So I'll do one to show you guys. And then Elizabeth's going to take over on steak cooking because she's not cooked a lot of meat. I'm literally taking it and giving it a little run. Uh -huh. Susan, I know uh, on the grill, you're not a fan of uh, putting the cover down. Is that correct? No cover down. This is a skirt steak. It's going to cook in five minutes per side. The grill down, the, it's going to steam it. And we want you to keep, um, like, we're, we just did one squeeze, Pat. We're going to do a quarter turn. Let's do a timer. Let's go to all on board. We're going to do a quarter turn about two minutes in, and we're going to squirt it again. Because we want to get some flavor on this. We have one opportunity. And this thing's only going to take like five minutes. While well, we're waiting for the two minutes to pass, let everybody find your pan. Woo, I'm burning. That you're going to cook your greens in. Put that on the stove. We don't have to, we don't have to fire it up just yet, but let's get ready. Woo. Yeah. It would be time for a mask, right? How you guys doing there? You, can you breathe okay? Oh my God. No. <laughs> this is terrible. I have to get a water. Oh my God. We're going to asphyxiate. All right, we're turning our hood on for a second. We'll be back when it's time to turn. Oh Go for God. it. <laughs> Yeah. 
time for a quarter turn. Okay. You doing out there can you breathe we got we got dog bones on i gotta take the dog bones off the grill because that's what where jen hides them from the dogs hold on second cut we just turned it we're gonna give it another spritz we had to mask up <laughs> pat was saying pat was saying that he had to get the dog bones off the grill that's where i hide the bones that you roasted oh, excellent he hides the grill, the bones on the grill uh, when they're not cooking. <laughs> okay, so now that means we have uh, we got two minutes to cook on this side. I might even be changing my tune. I might not even go full five. I might go four. We're gonna do four minutes per side. If you're a fan of medium well or more, give it a second more. But this steak is hard to get pink because it's so thin. Can you hear me with my mask on? I can. Okay. We're just about at four minutes. In another minute, we're gonna flip it. We're gonna squirt it again. And then we're gonna fire up our pan and put a little bit of fat in it for our greens. Again, we can use a little thing like this and we'll take a little bit of that oil from our, our reservoir that we had, which I still think I can almost fill that bottle up with. So we really haven't all in use that much oil. And yeah, 49 seconds, and then we're going to flip it. The cayenne, cooking with cayenne is tricky because it does like to go up in the air. So right. we're on, I just flipped mine. You just flipped yours already? Yeah, you said two and three. My my below my timing not right. Your timing is not right, but that's all right. We're gonna flip too. Let's do it. So straight again, straight up, or you can leave it like that and then go straight the second time. Look at that beautiful steak, everybody! Holy cow! It's wow! Isn't that nice? All right, now give it, the, give it a swizzle. We're putting our mask up. <laughs> I love the mask up. Hey, listen, I can't put my hood on or you won't hear us and they won't hear you. So we're suffering for you. But luckily, 2021, there's a lot of masks on here. <laughs> All right. And now with everybody that doesn't cook a lot of meat, take your finger and poke that meat. And you don't have to turn it back on. Really. You're cooking it more than me, Kate. This meat is cooking faster than I said. Thin steak cooks fast. I like it pink. It's hard to get skirt steak with a pink center, but if you touch your thumb right there without making a fist or anything, that's the, the feel you're going for. If you like it more cooked, squeeze your finger and touch it there. I've already got it pretty soft. I'm going to say we're going to go 30 more seconds, spin it and spray it. And then while that steak rests, we cook our greens and we pull this baby together. Nice. I'm going to go open my wine. Get your wine. In the meantime, Elizabeth, you want to get the big round platter and we'll flip our potato out on it. Um, it might be easier actually for me to hold this and you use the lid and the fist and then we'll get, we'll get our good side, the side you like, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yep. <laughs> yep, you're right. And there's no oil, so you don't have to worry about put it down. Put the whole thing, roll it, and swap it out of your platter. Yeah, so amazing. Cool. So that's our potato. Now, turn, quarter turn your steaks, everybody. Last turn on the steak. Quarter turn it and give it one more hit. Oops, I get caught. Last turn on the steak. One more turn, quarter turn. <laughs> One more hit of your cayenne. <laughs> and at that point, I'm gonna turn our heat. Oh, that's beautiful. It's amazing. Whoop, whoop. We'll, let, we'll let that sit while we finish everything else so it firms up. Let's get our platter over there, Elizabeth, for the meat. 
I'm turning my meat off because Elizabeth and I can eat it practically raw and this is already almost medium. So put that on your plate. Now our potato and our, we're gonna we're gonna slice that. So put that over on your cutting board. Awesome. And then we'll move our greens can to the functioning spot. My nose is clear. My lungs are clear. <laughs> Your sinus is all good. Woo! I'm gonna throw some water in there to keep, make that stop. I'll just put. It, it's gonna be bad at first, but then it'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Just I'm gonna take it right out of me. Okay. Okay. We're down to the last phase. We've got a beautiful potato. We've got beautiful steak. We are gonna slice that steak <coughs> right before we eat it. <laughs> but let's let it rest because if we cut it right now all the juice that's inside is going to run onto our cutting board and it's going to be sucky so leave your steak get your greens take your little here elizabeth get your pitcher turn your greens on <laughs> turn your flame on medium to high and just swizzle around the pan maybe one more time like that and then take the pan, these won't be hot, right? Yeah, get your pan all moved up. We, need, we might need tissue. All right, that's perfect. And as soon as that pan is super hot, first thing that's going in is kale. If you only have one green, you're gonna put that in all, you know. <laughs> all right, that's gorgeous, let that sit. Wait, make some noise so people can see it. It looks good. Gorgeous. Oh, I love it. All right. And then you know what way your grain goes. We talked about that earlier. So you're going to want to cut it across, but not yet. Let's get so these Susie, greens. just uh, is this something that we should tent or no? No, leave it. It's We're going to be eating it soon enough. If we can survive. <laughs> All right. If you have kale, throw it in the pan. You're gonna hear a little snap, crackle, pop. If you don't have kale, hold up a second because you're gonna, yours is gonna cook faster than ours. Anybody that's got kale, get it in there. Perfect, take your hand in the salt, just one time around the pan with a little salt. This is a four gin and tonic meal, Susan. What? This is a four gin and tonic meal. Well, that's your problem. We've shared one glass of wine. <laughs> okay, now get your tongs, honey, and you can have two things if you want them. There's a spoon, and move that stuff around. And as soon as you get that kale a little bit coated with the with the oil that's in there, I'm gonna turn that down a touch. We're gonna put our garlic in. The garlic can burn fairly easily, so we don't want to. Uh, we don't want it to like really hit the pan as much as sort of sprinkle it around. And again, if you don't have kale, just hold it for a second. Okay, so I just cheated and took a little bite of my steak. And? It's so delicious. It's ridiculous, right? I'm not oh kidding. My God. There's no reason to cook steak any other way once you've done this and it makes no sense. All right, but in the so good. Garlic, garlic on your kale. Again, if you're not cooking kale, hold up. Perfect. Ooh, that's hot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, anybody that has Swiss chard, get that ready. If you're only doing Swiss chard, it's coming up soon. Often these around, we want to get a good head start on kale because kale takes the longest. <laughs> Our, we're finally getting our um, breath back. <laughs> uh, so wait, show them your potato while you're while we're waiting. We flipped our potato out to rest in the pan. You're not going to believe it. It's spectacular. That looks delicious. Isn't that amazing? Oh my gosh! It's so it now we've got a beautiful sauce that everybody loves. We've got a beautiful potato. Our steak is resting, our greens are in. One more toss on those greens, Elizabeth. And then if you're using shard, it's time to throw the shard in. You might need a tiny drop of oil. You might want a little spray, you might not. Depends on how much. So dump the whole thing in, yeah, beautiful. 
Jen, if you're using spinach, if you're only using spinach, you can go ahead and pop your spinach in your hot pan now. And All right. But Jen, wait. If you're only doing spinach, put your garlic in first and then your spinach on top. And you gotta really move it around because yours is gonna cook quick. And as soon as you feel like you have a wilt, dump your reese mixture in. But that's only for the spinach people. Gotcha. Right. Anybody who's cooking will heartier greens with Elizabeth and I, hold up on, on that orange. So we want to get these greens cooked down a little bit first. I'll take your bowl for you. And then the main. So get your other utensil here, honey, and get the bottom on the top and the top on the bottom. All right. Good girl. <laughs> we forgot to put our stems in. We should have done that with the kale, but I don't care. I love them. I'm putting them in anyway. Put them in if you have them done. Now, when we feel like our pan might be a little too dry, that's when you're going to put your OJ in. Instead of adding more oil or more fat, when the pan looks dry, Put in your, your juice, but we still could go another minute. I feel like we need to get like that guy over there, pull that guy in. Yep. Beautiful. Now, has everybody thought about their table? Because that's going to come quick. Our table is ready. Ooh, nice work. I can't wait to show you my new fish that I bought. Oh, I can't boy. Wait to see everything. Uh, we're going to have just look at that. This meal, like I will say, especially Mediterranean meals. They don't eat their food as hot as <coughs> they don't eat their food as hot as Americans do. So this food, a little bit less hot and a little bit more room temp, is perfect. So we'll be able to take a minute to see what everybody made. All right, Elizabeth, I say juice, juice and raisins. Throw them in, and that's going to hit a nice hot pan, and that's going to get all the garlic that's stuck on the bottom. <laughs> To come up so use the yeah use that side and then scrape up any of that garlic that might have burned onto the bottom because that is so delicious but we don't lose it Some people <laughs> big dogs tell them it's almost dinner time we're five, we're five minutes to plates guys um, i'm going to take a little taste right now everybody else should just for salt and pepper because again Oh, we're going to put red pepper flakes. Do we want to still? Uh, yes, we love red pepper flakes. So put some red pepper flake in there. Just a few, a little pinch. We're going to skip it because we got a lot of spice for us Irish girls. But we need more salt. So one more time around. Ours is a little meat lacking in salt. Like I said, better to put your salt when you're cooking than at the table. So we added a little bit. The raisins are gorgeous. It has a nice orange scent. Hey, Ryan's in the room. Come on over. We almost did it, honey. We're almost there. All right. I'm turning mine off. I don't know. Everybody kind of has to do that to your own liking. I like them a little heartier. They're really, they're amazing. If Elizabeth wasn't here, I'd salt them a little bit more. But they're perfect. And they have that nice sweetness. When we pop them in the bowl, which we can do now, but it's up to you. But let's um, put them, pop them in the bowl, and that's when we're gonna throw our pine nuts on once they're in the bowl. Thank you for them in. Yeah, that's for that reason. If you ever get a bowl with two handles, it's super fantastic because you get so much to leverage on. We've got the red stems. We've got the yellow raisins. You know what? You could also put on this another time when you made them because it is Catalonian. You could put some manchego on it. You could put a little goat cheese around it. We're going to put our pine nuts. Um, I forget where we put ours. Over here. Right in. Just sprinkle around as many as you like. I like them too. Also, you know, you could do a little shredded um, Parmesan with your peeler. You could put some of those, that on top of them. But let me show you. Look at ours. They're spectacular. They're steaming. They have the pine nuts. They have the red stems. Incredible. 
Beautiful, honey. You did a great job. I, I hear one sizzling in the bottom. I'm going to pull it out. We have two dogs who think they're eating some of this. Look, Pat, I know you weren't there when I showed off my greens, or Elizabeth's greens, I should say. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice red great. stems. We have pine nuts. Beautiful, right? Wow, we're going to show you ours in one second. All right, now we're going to cut steak, and then we're going to, I'm going to go clean up while you cut the steak. All right, I'm going back over to the counter because the only thing left to do is cut the steak, everybody. Here we go, Suze. We've got our spinach oh, with raisins and a little Parmesan cheese. Oh, that's oh, amazing. Good. It smells really good. Kind of a big bowl, but that's okay. No, it's so good. It's beautiful. All right. Everybody it just goes to show how much spinach really cooks down. I mean, you, we will buy it by the five pound bag at the That's restaurant. The to, it goes quick. <laughs> the best thing to buy at the restaurant depot, Pat, because you can actually use it all. <laughs> Elizabeth and I need to open the window as soon as possible. All right, all we have left to do is cut our steak and show things off. Remember, most, most importantly, across that grain, you can see it. And the, uh, yep. And then the one other thing I'm gonna say, I'm gonna show it to you a little bit closer. You're going across the grain and you're gonna want like a 45 degree angle with your knife so that your slice isn't a straight slice. It's got a little, you'll see any red you might have. So like that angle. You can hold it with your hand if you're me. You can hold it with the tongs if you don't like that. And Let's see thin. Nope. Thin is good. Thin is great. Thin, thin. win. Oh, ours is so oh, perfect. Yeah. So let's say we did about four minutes aside. Ours is, and tip your knife a little bit more so you can get that nice edge. Oh, I love it. And put that on the plate. Take another and I'll show off what you did. Keep the juice that's come off and on the plate and put your meat right on top of that juice. Well, Elizabeth cuts the second pieces. I'm going to show you how beautiful ours is. Beautiful. Nice wow. and medium rare. Oh, this looks so good. And I'm, and I'm, I'm right, right? That's not spicy. It's just flavor. I have no idea how, like my lungs are raw from the cayenne, but the steak's not too hot. All right. All right, while Elizabeth slices the meat, I'm going to get the table ready. Elizabeth, tell them a story. Um, I can't think of a story, but that is so good. <laughs> so, the candle. Mm. Holy crap. Your mother asked you to. It, it doesn't matter. Is Ryan there? Yeah. Yeah, he just walked in. In fact, I was just telling him to come on in and, and give come a look. Come on in, Ryan, see what we did. Yeah. I can't wait to see everyone's tortillas. This is something that every single grandmother and mom has like their own perfect recipe and every single family thinks that they have the best tortilla. <laughs> what, what do we have like that? I mean, we have a lot of things like we do the old family steak. We have the corned beef and the coke cannon. We've got a lot of the soda Pizza. bread. I think we're really well Pizza. known for having the best whiskey sours. Oh yes, we have our whiskey sours. We have our pizza. Where that we got the mm -hmm. pizza king, right? And here's our meat. Yum. We eat a lot, so we have a lot. Let's see. What I mean. Oh boy, that's amazing! All right, everybody that has the time, that's there, that's ready, flip, flip your cameras on. Let's see what you got. Wait, let's get Elizabeth on here and uh, yeah. do that. and pack it in there. <laughs> yeah, we can get a spot later. Ben says, his, <laughs> ben says his eggs are scrambled. His potatoes are scrambled eggs. Who's Mark? That's Ben. That's ben, I were too. Let me let him kind of settle. I guess we should have gone with the fifth potato. So ours didn't need it, but maybe uh, maybe that fifth potato would have been the way to go. So ours is going to be good. But that means next time, either do a little more potato or a little less egg and let it sit until it's a, that gluey consistency that you saw ours when it slides into the pan and you'll be fine. So I'm Here asking everybody to start their video. I'm giving everybody yeah, kind of- Yeah, let's see what you got, Elizabeth. 
Michael. Hi, Michael. Julia, how'd you come out? Oh my gosh, Julia's is so good. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Mom, how'd you come out? Pat, Pat, we need to get some audio on. So I, I mean, I, with this the way it is, as you ask them to put their video on, oh, you okay, need other people, on, yeah. Guys. So I got you. Hold on. I'm working on it. <laughs> We're unmuting anybody. Hi, Alex. I'm not sure who that is. I think it's a Gigi card. Oh, oh, oh no, it didn't work. Alan, I missed it. Um, it what do you call those? Oh, oh beautiful. It's so oh, oh, that's impressive. Jimmy, oh, cheers. Everyone Yay. Oh. Wait, let's show ours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is our Ella, can you see? Is that Ella? Who's with you? Here. Let me get Elizabeth in. Where's Alan? Do you have it? All right, this is our whole meal. We have our Spanish dancer. Is it Ella? No, that's Casey. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Ella, you're being called. Ella's over there watch, playing video games. I can't see the closer so I can wave. I can't. There you are. Hi, Casey. <laughs> he helped me. I would have been like giving up. Did you go all the way me? Here's Ella. Hi, Hi Ella. Hi. Did you come too? Oh, there's no. social <laughs> video games. Okay, <laughs> Don, how did everything come out? I see the potato. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. The book wow. even got the green stuff. Everybody's Romesco is so good. Oh, my potatoes oh. are oval. Yeah, let's see it. All right, let's see. <laughs> Yes, Susan and Elizabeth. It was so much fun. So much fun. Thank you. You guys, everybody, what do we say for toast in Spain? There's a flan again, too. Cheers. Cheers. Nice work. Thank you so much. Thank you for Elizabeth joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Goodbye. See you later. Thank you. Bye bye. There's Mabes. Abel. Hi, Ben. Hi, Pat. How are you? Good. Enjoy your dinner. This looks great. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm hungry now. Scrambled eggs. <laughs> uh, so I was with you, Ben. I'm telling well, you the whole. I'm, I'm like, my shinny shake it, and it's not holding together like I'm hoping. Mine looks like scrambled eggs. Yeah, Lunch. that's all right. I bet it tastes good. Like Susie said, it's going to be like hash. Yeah. I'm up for that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, take care. Cheers. Enjoy.